Boys, boys, boys. You want to know something? The tree is peeing. And that means it's time for this to happen. Oh, oh, baby. Who's ready for a rather middling trade deadline coming up? Welcome to the shit show. I am wearing a secondhand Penguins jersey because I got to go down with the ship. I got to be completely honest here. There's a... This is, uh, it's going to be a sad day. Uh, no, no penguins. Um, they are sellers for the first time since I was in high school. It is a bad situation. Let's throw on some little background music here in the meantime, though. Something a little light. That should do it. Yeah, that'll definitely do it. <clears throat> Something to lighten the mood while we go over some trades in the meantime. How's everyone doing today? Deadline's at 3 o'clock. We'll probably go till about 4 or so because the trades usually tickle in about an hour or so. So I figured, let's do a little trade deadline stream. Let's do something uh, a little interesting. A little random. I hope there's actually trades that happen because it's uh, definitely been a uh, buyer's market. If that's uh, the way to say it. Especially if, uh, lo lo if you're looking here. If Jason Zucker is getting traded for a six-round pick. And I know Jason Zucker hasn't had the greatest year, but... He's getting traded for a six-round pick, brother. That's that's all you need to know. Also, uh, more recent trades. Redeem Simic, who's mostly been toiling in the minor leagues this past year, and a seventh going for Klim Kostin. And Klim Kostin hasn't been doing well. If you look at uh, Klim Kostin's uh, hockey DB page, it, it hasn't been good. It has not been good. He, he, he has not replicated what he did in Edmonton. But this is just a change of scenery trade, because Simic has been toiling in the minor leagues. He had a big contract, I believe, like, I think, a couple years, like, two or three million, I think. But he was more like a stay-at-home defenseman, seventh defenseman type, probably depth for the uh, playoff push, if I say so myself. But uh, here's the real big trade. Turner Elson for Nick Batan. Nick Batan, I remember when uh, this guy was supposed to be good. Turner Elson has had three games in the NHL minor league depth. Nick Batan was a top prospect at one point. Had a couple cracks with the Winnipeg Jets. 100 points in juniors. The fun times. All the good stuff here. <laughs> Eric could Branson to the Pens. <laughs> uh, Lord, I, uh, I do not want to be reminded of that day. Don't. Don't. <sighs> But he's mostly a fringe player, mostly somebody brought in, once again, for depth purposes. Nothing too insane. Jason Zucker going for a six-round pick. Patrick Maroon. Patrick Maroon. Oh, dude, the greatest cup champion. One of the legendary memes of the sports world. Going from Minnesota to Boston to replace Milan Lucic. Their snarl and their face, not, not their face puncher, but just their aggressive bottom six physical forward. Not bad in that regard, especially when it only costs them... Luke Toporowski in a sixth. Toporowski, I believe, is a... Uh, hold on here. Let's look this up. Yeah, Toporowski is an undrafted type. Potential might get a crack at the NHL. But it's going to be a bit of a long shot. From Bettendorf, Iowa. Represent. Not bad. The pen sell-off continues. Um... I am legitimately shocked that the Penguins got a fourth-round pick for Chad Ruedel. Chad Ruedel is a decent seventh defenseman, but, like, I mean, he's not bad, but how did this get a fourth-round pick, especially in a seller's market, in a buyer's market? I mean, it's 2027 fourth. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a ways away, but I'm surprised you got that much. I figured you'd get maybe a fifth or sixth for him. You know what? I'll take it. I will absolutely take it. Bigger news today, Ben Myers going for a fifth round pick. Ben Myers is more, you know, fringe depth, nothing crazy there. Kyle Poso, the fan favorite and captain in Buffalo, requested a trade to Florida. He is going to Florida. They granted his wish. He's going for Kale Jalin and a seventh round pick. I think Kale Jalin is, as I said, he's, or he's to make the roster spots, Phil. He's probably going to get maybe one more year on his ELC, might become a free agent. You're not going to get much out of him. It's more just to do right by Colin Poso. 
Tyler Toffoli in the big trade of the day, going for a third and a second round pick. I mean, dude, has there been a trade that has blown up in New Jersey's face more than the Toffoli trade? I mean, Debrinkit was worse, but if, if you think about it, Yegor Sharangovich in a third round pick. If you look at what Sharangovich is doing in Calgary, he's been doing very well. 45 points, 62 games. He's been a real catalyst in their top six. Probably one of the bright spots of the Flames. Toffoli's been okay, but New Jersey as a whole has just been a mess. Just complete mess. It is just... It's been a very, very ugly sight. Let's get rid of some of these tabs in the meantime, though. Jerome McGinless, I'm out trapping. Uh, Luke Toporowski, currently trending because nobody knows who Luke Toporowski is. Malcolm Subban, man. I haven't heard that name in a long time. Going to Columbus for future considerations. What has Malcolm Subban been up to? Because I know he... I thought he was in Europe for a hot minute. I guess not. Now, I'm thinking of Jordan Subban. He was in Europe. He had promise too. Never really panned out. Had a couple moments in Vegas, but... Never really emerged there. But I, I was surprised. I thought he had moved to Europe by now. But Malcolm Subban. I wonder if he'll get a uh, lick in Columbus. Especially if Elvis gets traded. Because he has requested a trade as well. Evgeny Kuznetsov. Who has been... Absolute tire fire. Uh, let's uh, uh, let's look up his analytics because <laughs> it's just it's, it's it's bad. It is so bad. If you look at his, oh, <laughs> dude, he fell off a cliff. Oh, there's like flashes of him left, but oh, dude, he is. Uh, Kuz is. Uh, he's not the same. Uh, the, the bird is no longer flying. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> like, it's just, it's been a bad year. It's, it, 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 it. he's, he at least doesn't have to play in Hershey, but it just like, he went from being a core contributor to that 18 cup team to just like, pfft, falling off. <sighs> and we got to talk about this trade. Yeah, we got to talk about this. Jay Gensel. This is why I'm wearing this. I'm wearing the Pens jersey because we go down with the ship. I don't want to have to deal with this. I know it's, it's a sad sight, but... um, Jake, it's nice knowing you, brother. I wish we could have kept you, but I completely understand. Uh, business is business. You're probably demanding too much money. And uh, the Steelers, uh, the Penguins chose to keep the uh, other guys, including uh, Ricard Raquel and Brian Rust. So... That's why we get this. It's a bulk return. Ty Smith wasn't able to do much here. He was just a log jam in depth, and I still don't understand why they trade uh, Hextall. Like, Hextall just like, ugh. Geez. So it's a depth piece. Uh, Kyle Dubas loves his, um, and I mean, he loves himself, his, uh, his Sue Greyhounds. So that's why Michael Bunting is coming back here. Billy Koivonen? Who is uh, doing well in uh, European League, Swedish League, but uh, kind of struggled with the North American game. Yeah, I think he had a point. Vasily Ponomaryov, who will probably get a decent look in the NHL in this reason. Cruz Lucius, who's a decent point getter in uh, Wisconsin, but Carolina didn't have to give up any real top prospects. Like, Morrow's still there. Jackson Blake's still there. A few of the guys are still there as well. And the conditional first-round pick is if the Canes win the Cup, I think, so... It's probably going to be a second round pick, and the conditional fifth, I think, is something else. Anthony Duclair, the Lightning are panicking. Jack Thompson's a relatively decent prospect. So, uh, Tampa Bay's a mess. They are just trying to figure things out, and it's just... Uh... Well, Fritz, too. You have to consider Rust is on a no-movement clause. So, that's why he's not able. And I believe... Let me take a look. Let's look up Brian Ruscap from here. Because I think I figured out the real problem here. Yeah, Brian Rust has a no movement clause for the next two years. You can't get rid of him. This is why the Penguins are in deep shit. This is why they had to get rid of uh, Jake Gensel. Because they kept setting the team on fire. They pissed it away. And it just turned into this hot mess. Uh, these are probably organization that pieces. Let's see. No movement clause. No movement clause for Malkin. Modified no trade clause for Raquel Smith and Bunting. Uh, Riley Smith, I mean, he'll probably end up getting traded too. He hasn't really panned out here. And, uh, he's probably not going to get much. I didn't realize he was on two years left in his deal. 
Jeff Carter, no movement clause. Achari, modified no trade clause. Lars Eller is probably your best trade piece right now. Uh, Jesse Pulley, RV. You could get a bag of peanuts for him. Ah, <laughs> uh, kill me. Yeah, uh, no movement clause for Carlson. No movement clause for Latang. Modified no trade clauses for Pets and Graves. And then uh, Jari. Jari is rumored to be traded too. Nadelkovic is probably going to be your trade piece because Bloomfist is ready in the minor leagues. And the dead cap, I think, is just retained salary. So it's not much there. It's uh, it, it's obviously very fun. I am uh, totally looking forward to our descent into the abyss. And um, I'm very happy. Yeah, very, very, very happy. I have no qualms whatsoever. And uh, I am going to cry myself to sleep tonight because uh, the penguins are selling for the first time since I was in high school. You know, when I said that the Penguins should have rebuilt after that Ranger series, I did not imagine they'd be this bad. That's all I'm going to say. If you saw the game last night, the team died. Like, they just... Pff, dead. Not good. Uh, it was like... Uh, uh, Jari just turned into just a bit of a wreck there. and uh, Which actually uh, leads to our first Super Chat of the day from the Squid. Well, would, would you look at the time? It's half, it's five past Jari. <laughs> Ooh, Jake Allen's going to the devs, huh? Is this going to be their goaltending fix? Jake Allen to the devils. Let's see. Yep. Jake Allen going to New Jersey for a conditional third. Games played could make it a second. Montreal retains 50%. And also, Wade Allison going to Nashville for Denis Gurionov. Ooh, man. Remember when Denis Gurionov had promise? It was Jake Allen. He did well for a couple years. Cup winner in St. Louis. But, um, hmm. I don't know if this is going to really solve their goaltending issues. And I know uh, Vitek vanacek has been a mess. Akira Schmid's been... Mm, and Nico Dawes had his moments, especially last night. But is New Jersey going for it, or are they kind of half in, half out? As I know, you say Soros was rumored to be on the market, but I don't think he's going anywhere. As I figured, Montembeau was your big guy. Caden Primo is going to be getting a better look, because I think Primo actually outplayed Jake Allen. By the way, uh, shout out to Josh Waugh as well. Slavkowski's actually kind of gotten his act together as well, so not bad there. Cade Weber going for a six-round pick. Cade Weber, big 6'7 defenseman. It's typical stuff. Yakov Trenin for bottom six snarl in depth with Graham Swart for Jeremy Hansel on a third. Yakov Trenin, quality fourth liner. Good face-off guy. Penalty killer. He'll be good for the depth system, especially in the minors prior to replace Darren Helm. Troy Stetcher, defensive depth once again, going for a fourth-round pick. So uh, Stetcher, I think, has been doing okay. Let's look up Troy Stetcher here. Yeah, he's, uh, he's depth. I mean, he's not what he was in Vancouver, but he's he'll do a job. He's, uh, he's a guy you bring in as a body, and if you have injuries, you bring him in. Brandon Duhame for a third-round pick. Duhame is uh, organizational depth. Prospect for prospect, underachieving prospect. Jacob Perot, son of Yannick Perot. Going back to Montreal, where Yannick Perot, I believe, played for Jan Mishak, who is also struggling. It's a prospect for prospect, a change of scenery sort of thing. Anthony Beauvillier for a fifth-round pick. Beauvillier playing with Barry Trotz in Nashville. Bo hasn't had the greatest year. If I can spell here. Yeah, he's, he struggled big time. I know he got traded to Chicago earlier for a fifth-round pick, and Chicago got their fifth-round pick back, so broke even. Not terrible. But Beauvillier is a decent middle six winger on his prime. I think uh, with Trotz, I think he could get back to that game. So I think it's an interesting little play there. Face puncher Joel Edmondson going for a third and fifth round pick. That cross check, baby. Uh, Toronto wanted big pieces. They wanted Noah Hannafin. They wanted Chris Tanev. Uh, Colton Pareko was rumored to be in play as well for wanting. But um, in reality, you get Joel Edmondson and Ilya Labushkin because Morgan Riley needs his babysitter. But I mean, you know, it could work. But... It's it's more for grit and snarl. And these are pure tree-living traits. I mean, let's be honest here. Vegas Golden Knights are going all in again. <laughs> Noah Hannafin as a rental for Daniil Miramanov, 
a, a conditional first and a conditional third. I think the conditional first is if they make the cup or win the cup, I believe. Daniil Miramanov has had promise. Let's look up Miramanov. Because he's done okay, especially in the minor leagues. Never really got a chance in Vegas because they're loaded on the defensive front. Miramanov will get a chance in Calgary. So, like, interesting arc. Went back to Europe, trouble, and then had uh, got injured for a bit. Went back to Sochi, did well, and then got signed by Vegas. Had a few cups of coffee. But otherwise, I think he was a black ace on their Stanley Cup team. So, nothing too crazy there, I would say. Alex Venberg. Going to the New York Rangers for a second and a fourth round pick. Uh, the interesting thing about this fourth round pick, it can upgrade to a third if Niels Lundqvist for the Dallas Stars gets more than 55 points in two years. So, <laughs> that's one of the... Let's look up Niels Lundqvist. I think he has something like 20 points? 15 points. So, Niels Lundqvist needs to get 40 more points by the end of 2025. If he does that, Seattle's pick upgrades to a third rounder. <laughs> Oh, man, the glories of uh, conditional picks. This is a fascinating hockey trade for me. Bowen Byram going to Buffalo. In Colorado, uh, Bowen Byram's had trouble trouble adapting. He's had injuries. He looked really good in their cup run, but he hasn't been the same. Casey Middlestad, who's really revived himself. He had trouble as well, but he's revived as well. It's a change of scenery trade for both. I think it's uh, Colorado dealing from a position of strength because Byram was never going to achieve his potential there. Middlestad is a need because Ryan Johansson has not been that great, which is also why Ryan Johansson got traded. He just, uh, somebody ate the contract. Middlestad is going to fill in at second line center role, and he's going to be a guy that is going to be counted on to be an immediate core piece. So I think that's going to be a big issue there. For Colorado, Sean Walker also going to uh, Colorado as well. With Ryan Johansson, a conditional first-round pick. The first-round pick is what uh, Philly was really looking for. Johansson got placed on waivers. He's going to the minors. And that's really all there is to it. Johansson has just been a... Uh... Yep, Ryan Johansson is... Uh... He's... Yeah. He had that brief revival for a bit, but he's just... Uh... Just more... He's just overpaid. That's the real thing with Johansson. You remember when Adam Henrique was still in the NHL? Yep, he got traded with Sam Carrick, who's been lingering around as well. For a first-round pick and a conditional fifth. I mean, Edmonton's going all in. Depth's been their issue. Defense has also been their issue. Stuart Skinner's really come into his own. But with Edmonton winning and having that 16-game winning streak, I think they made the opportunity to really push. So 50% retention for both Henrique and, uh, and Carrick. And also Tampa Bay's also uh, brought in. I think they got a fourth round pick because they took uh, extra retention from Henrique's deal to make this work. Vladimir Tarasenko is loading up to Florida. He's loading, going for a fourth and a third round pick. So we got a few trades in the meantime that have upgraded. Ooh, Eric Johnson going for a fourth round pick. Eric Johnson to Philadelphia. So this is your Sean Walker replacement. Eric Johnson, he's a... He was a good defenseman at his time. He just did not mesh in Buffalo. He didn't do very well in Buffalo at all. As I said, he had that really good year, the cup year, and then he just... This might be near the end. I mean, Eric Johnson, he just couldn't stay healthy. That was always his biggest problem. Great player in his time, but just... As I said, there were a lot of times where he got cut down by injury. 12-13, 14-15, 16-17, 20-21, 19-20. I, I, like it just it was just injury after injury and it just it hurt him but he has a cup he made a lot of money so this is going to be their bolstering as well for the playoff push probably going to be a healthy scratch or maybe a third pairing guy just didn't mesh in buffalo unfortunately wade allison by the way had a one year in philly hasn't really panned out this is a ron hextall pick by the way so uh looking for somebody to blame that he never panned out I mean, had the NHL size, just never translated. Might get another cup of coffee or two here and there. He's still 26. I mean, there's still time. He might be a career in Europe at this point. Gurionov's probably going back to Russia. He had such promise, too. And he just, it just never worked. Damn shame. So Gurionov is, uh, he's, he's Russia-bound, probably. Last gas for him. 
go back over some trades in the meantime, though. I know I'm paying attention. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, all you. We have over a thousand people watching this stuff. Uh, Justin, no uh, news on Riley Smith just yet. Yep, Eric Johnson going to Philly. Don would tell Masterclass. Wolfie for five, by the way. Loved getting Chris Tana, but I still can't help but feel unfulfilled at the deadline with how Colorado and Winnipeg stacked up. There's still time. Remember, the deadline is at three, so we have about an hour, and then trades are going to come in over time. There's still that backlog that the NHL has to process. So everyone's wheeling and dealing. They're making their calls. They're trying to hold each other out, get that feel, break that weakness. And there are some teams that need to trade because, once again, Riley Smith still on the board. Um... I think there are actually a few people still on the board. So I think they have the trade targets right here, I believe. Let's take a look, see. Yep, here's your trade bait board. I, I prefer TSN, Can uh, Canadian media does better with the hockey. So, yeah, Toffoli's gone. Matt Dumba, you're probably not getting much for him. So, I mean, he has had a rough year. Zucker got a six. Nick Dowd is on the board. Apparently, they're looking for a first-round pick for him. So, good luck, even though he's a really solid bottom six center. Yeah, good luck with that. Patches is rumored on the board. He'd be a decent rental. Jake DeBrusque has been rumored as well. Might be traded in like a one-for-one -for, -one for a winger. Oop. That was a little iffy. Sorry about that. Yeah, Jacob Chitron might be rumored on the board. Lars Eller still out there. The Vegas 2024 first is a big chip. Elias Lindholm has been rumored to be traded as well. That was uh, one of the rumors that Jake Gensel might be going to Vancouver. It would be Elias Lindholm going to Boston and Jake DeBrus going to Pittsburgh, which would have been... Uh, Markstrom's rumored as well. Ocposo's gone. Brandstrom might be a rumored chip. Ruedel's gone. Maroon's gone. Mikel Granlund. Granlund's done all right, but... I'm still sour over last year's trade. He was just such a poor fit. I mean, a poor fit. Now, Delkovich would be an interesting get for a team who needs goaltending depth. Eric Johnson, Tyson Berry still kicking. So he'd be more of a rental. Might get like a fifth or a sixth. He hasn't really panned out in Nashville and Trotz's system. Capo Kakinen, yeah, uh, you, you're probably not getting much for him. Tyler Johnson, once again, you're probably not getting much for him. Alex Carrier, going to be a UFA. Interesting piece there. Andrew Peak who is a mess defensively. His analytics are terrible, so no. Dominic Kubalik, if you want a one-time shot, and that's pretty much it. Jake Allen's gone. David Savard, if you want Snarl, the rumor's there too. Ross Levick. Frank Vetrano is probably more the underrated one. I think he could get a decent return. I think he should be higher up. I don't understand why Boston would trade Linus Allmark, though. I feel like with him, I feel like you should do from a position of strength. I don't feel like you should trade him immediately. Joel Armia, Tomas Tatar, if he wants to play verse 13, Mike Hoffman. So, yeah, nothing much happening there. So, six round pick for Zook. Sorry about that. You have no salary retention for Eric Johnson, by the way. Jake Allen to New Jersey, a six round pick for them. All good there. So, who's going to back? This is more for basic analytics. Jay Fresh does good stuff, by the way. You should uh, you should follow him, too. Yep, Eric Johnson, once again, falling to depth, more or less. Did not, uh, didn't really pan out. Ooh, because Netsov's already in practice. Interesting. Yeah, Gurionov did not pan out. Wade Allison, this is just like, it's a, it's a depth for depth trade. That, that's Wade Allison for Dennis Gurionov. Nothing too crazy happening there. But welcome each and every one of you. Welcome, guys. Andrew Peaks going to the Bruins. Oh, jeez. Here I am saying he hasn't been good defensively. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, seriously, if you look up Andrew Peaks' analytics, it has not been good. He is more of the traditional stay-at-home defenseman. And, uh, yeah, it's, um, I, I get it's Columbus, but Columbus's defense is not something you should be going towards, especially with $2.8 million for three more years. Oh, good Lord. I mean, I get he's young, but, uh, uh, this is a move. This is, uh, I got a shit post. Sorry. One of the moves of our time. 
That is Andrew Peak. Strawberry rumored return is future considerations. I mean, it better be future considerations. And Columbus better be retaining some salary. Especially if you have three years left on that deal. Whew. Aqua came with Sean Shanley for 10 Canadian. Kane's man. Raleigh, we got because that's all for our latest cup push. We're loaded with talent. We got rid of locker room cancer bunting. We'll blow you away, so come to our games. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm not feeling up the snuff today. Uh, mild flu going around, so... Unfortunately, not at my peak ability there, Aqua Gamer. So, I, I completely apologize about that. Um, so, it's, uh, it's one of those things where it doesn't debilitate you, but it's noticeable enough where it affects everything you do. Like, you know, aches and pains, shivers, coughing, stuff like that. But it's nice and relaxing. I'm glad you could all join me for this uh, this endless rambling session. I have a few ideas later on, but I want to go over all the trades. We'll do that stuff in the meantime. We'll go over the super chats. So don't worry, guys. We'll be coming for you. Truck, truck, and more trucks. Mm -hmm. Gotta do the truck, man. Yeah, uh, Wenberg uh, isn't bad, though. Wenberg will at least fill a middle six role. Well, David Kim, they got a goalie. They got Jake Allen, even though I don't know if he's going to do much right now. Well, Shabin, here's the thing, man. If they win the cup, I'll do one big thing and then I'll end up retiring it. That's probably what I'll end up doing. I thought about it before. But, like, dude, if they make the cup finals, my voice is going to be fucking shredded. Ugh. But one more hour left, 58 minutes until the official end of the trade deadline. But once again, that doesn't mean the trade stop. More will come in over time, so we'll have that stuff there. Jakob Zaborl. Okay, so Jakob Zaborl is coming back for peak, so... Zaborl's mostly been in the minor leagues this year, but uh, you want uh, deep regret? Boston's 2015 NHL draft. Zaborl flopped. Jake DeBrusque at least panned out, but he was a bit of a... I think it was supposed to be a late first. Zach Senishin was the deep reach, and look what happened after. Matt Barzal, Kyle Connor, Tom Shabbat, Erickson Eck, Brock Besser, Travis Konechny. Whew. They whiffed. They whiffed so much, dude. And they had back-to-back-to-back firsts. Oh. That is just, that, that is pain. That is just sheer pain. But once again, Andrew Peak has three more years left on his deal. So let's look up here. Andrew Peak. Yeah, he just signed an extension for 2.75. Uh you better hope Peak uh manages to maintain. That is all I'm gonna say. That is all I am going to say. Justin Ziegler for 10. Tree, are the Flyers retooling or doing a soft rebuild after the trades this week? What do the Devils and Pens do going forward? More importantly, rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. Yeah, I never watched much Dragon Ball growing up, but I mean, the dude was a legend. I mean, people love their Dragon Ball. A lot of people got good moral lessons out of it. It was a great show for what it was worth. I just, I just was never into anime growing up, but that is a tough loss. So uh, rest in peace, Akira. Hope you're doing well up there, my man. You made a great impact on a lot of people. Yankees 286. I like the Venberg move, but Ruido and Patan are good moves too. What other moves do the Rangers need to become cup contenders? Patch ready. They need defense. So their biggest issue is they've always lacked like bottom six defense. So if they can fix that, they'll be okay. Mostly bolster. I know Barclay Goudreau has had issues. So if we look up L New York Ranges over here. So let's look up uh, Mr. Panarin. And also something you need to do, you need uh, Mika Zibanejad to score at even strength. He hasn't, a uh, uh, little birdie DM me saying that he hasn't scored an even strength goal in 75 games. So you need that. Uh, you need Alexi. So what happens? Uh, well, Cooley hasn't been bad. Capo Caco, question is, do you ship him off and try to get a bigger piece for the all-in push and risk that? I mean, Matthew Rempe's a fun story. He just beats the shit out of people. He's doing his world boxing tour. Uh, Adam Edstrom isn't bad as well, but 
once again, it's uh, trying to find that defensive depth. That's, I feel, their biggest issue and hoping that Barclay Goodrow can get it together there. I would say that's more your issue. I mean, Ruedel, if he's getting regular top six minutes, you're in trouble. Ruedel is a number seven defenseman. He's a fine number seven defenseman. He's good in a pinch, but he's not a regular defenseman in the NHL. That's at least how I feel. I don't think it's a... But I wouldn't call it horrible, per se. But also, I will say, uh, are the Flyers retooling, uh, Justin? Uh, I feel they are kind of retooling. I feel like they're kind of... They still feel like they're rebuilding. They are overperforming. But I think the same thing, too, is... Uh, they do make the playoffs. It's house money for them. Because, once again, they've never made the playoffs. Like... The funny thing is, they try to go for it, do the half in, half out. They're terrible. They actually try to rebuild, and they end up doing it amazingly. It, it is, uh... Oh, MKI. I don't think Five really cares about the Ruedel trade. Hey, Liam, I'm doing well, man. How are you? On the Seeger? I mean, dude, I'm, I didn't expect Nylander to do that well. I mean, I know he has the hat trick, but... He did nothing in Pittsburgh. He was invisible when he was up here. So, I i mean, that, that's his last chance. He has talent, but he just never never was consistent. As odd as it was. Danny DeVito, by the way. Rep Akira Toriyama, creator of Dragon Ball. Yep, rest in peace for Akira. Chase Coyote for 10. Hey, Tree Coyotes fan here. Even though the team collapsed in February, I'm still happy with the season because of how the young guys are doing. I agree. I think you at least have a, a foundation to lay upon. I don't know if your future is going to be in Phoenix or elsewhere. But at the very least, you do have a young core that's starting to emerge. You do have some promise. Even though you did collapse again and you're probably going to trade pieces. But Oh, Phantom Beard. I don't know if the Sharks are getting the first round pick. We know how this goes. They'll end up getting third or fourth. And then Columbus will somehow lose the lottery again. That's why I really say. David E for five. Rip, rip Akira, Toriyama, and Schmidt. <laughs> oh, dude. You didn't have to kill Akira Schmidt, dude. Ugh. Also, rip Akira Kurosawa. I know he's been dead for decades, but, I mean, ripped him too. Chase Miller for five. Why do my Bruins think we need Pat Maroon? Replacing Milan Lucic. That's why they're doing it. They need that physical snarf on the bottom six. That's why they're doing it, Chase. Zane for five. Jake Allen to the Devils. Yep, I did see that. Uh, going for a conditional third, I believe. And Polar Bear for 349 New Zealand. That's a Beauty Pens jersey tree. Yep, I think it is a, uh, it's actually a Jordan Stahl. So it's an old Jordan Stahl I found secondhand at an auction. The only problem is the elbow's kind of messed up on this, but as I said, I got it for like 20 bucks. So it's not bad. Like 15, 20, I think. So it, as I said, it's, it's a nice shirt. I needed a jersey. It's old school. I mean, it's, it has that old winter classic tee, so I needed something for the collection. That's why I got it. Need to go to more Pens games, by the way. I mean, but they uh, they kind of suck, so uh, yeah. Crew Kid 52. Thoughts about the Rangers moves? Because I think they're okay, but I'm not sure all that much about the players involved other than Venber. Well, let's look at the Rangers trades in the meantime. If you're looking at the Rangers... Nick Patan is organizational depth. He's more or less going to be your minor league, probably a black ace in the playoffs. If things go to absolute shit, Patan will be getting minutes. Ruedel is a number seven defenseman. He'll do a job for you. He's not bad. But at the same time, if he's getting regular minutes, you're in trouble. So he's more of a, like, a depth issue. I think he's, like, he does a pinch. I think he's good depth for a playoff push. But he's not a regular defenseman in, say, playoff time. That's the least to me. But otherwise, uh, Venberg is more your, is a middle six, second line, third line, more or less uh, depth down the middle. Uh, he's more to replace Phil Peel. That That's really what you're replacing. Because, I mean, Venberg is not Heedle. Uh, he is nowhere near Heedle. But he'll do his damnedest to try. At least to me. I don't think he's going to be anything too insane, I would say. Yep, that, that's the thing, Firearm. Like, a, a, he's organizational depth. That's why you traded him. Uh, 
Chris Zarella. I don't know if Elvis goes to Toronto. I don't know if they have the cap to make it work. That's the real problem. Gabe Dover for 20. Hey, Tree, what do you think of the moves the Avs have made this year? I think they're doing interesting work. I really like the uh, Casey Middlestad acquisition, even though they had to give up Bowen Byram to do it. I don't think he was going to develop there. Sorry if I look at Colorado. Yakov Trenin, I really like, is a fourth line, third line penalty killer. I think he'll do well for their organizational depth come playoff time. Middlestad is more or less to replace Landeskog for the time being. Sean Walker, really nice defenseman as well. I think they've had issues on their back end, especially with some of the injuries they've had. So I think it's more or less to replace that. Like, Tomas Tatar didn't work out. Curtis McDermott somehow got actual resources in return. So I, I, I don't know there. But otherwise, I, I think they've done okay so far. But once again, it's... Uh, Still time. Sahil, uh, there's still time. They did make some moves. They traded for Ilya Labushkin and Joel Edmondson. I mean, if they don't do anything else, I'd say it'd be pretty disappointing. But, I mean, that is tree living, though. He's very passive at deadlines. The King Barrel Maker. Hold on. I've got to skip up. Do you stay up to watch Pacific Time Zone games? I do. I mostly... I go to the gym late at night. So, I go around... 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. So I do watch some of the games on the NHL network if they're available, TNT as well. So I do watch some games, not a ton. But at the same time, I I do stay up late. It's YouTuber time. Like, I, I go to bed at like 2. <laughs> well, I mean, as I've been tossing and turning the last couple nights because, you know, mild flu. But otherwise, nothing much there. Nothing much there. Jairo Barrios for 20 Canadian. What a turnout for Chevy to win every Jets fan over for acquiring a package for Pierre Bluc Dubois. Buying out the Wheeler signing, extending Shifley, Hellebuck, Nino, and Brassois, and acquiring Monaghan and Toffoli. And in the hunt for top of the league. What a peg has really surprised me. Because I knew, like, especially after last year, they needed to make big changes. I mean, I mean, I've, you figured at minimum Dubois and Wheeler were gone. I didn't know what was going to happen with... Uh, with Shifley and uh, Hellebuck. I thought they might have been traded. But at the same time, I mean, getting them extended was huge. Being on this win streak was huge. Monaghan's really, really, like, molded into his own, especially as a net front presence. And getting to Foley and Niederreiter for pretty much the cheap, I think they've done well for themselves. I think they're gunning for a deep run. And they kind of need a deep run, if we're going to be completely honest, especially with some of the issues they've been having with attendance. It has gotten better there. But at the same time, it, like... Winnipeg is a team that's funded and fueled by the common fan. They don't have the corporate backing of somewhere like a Toronto or a Vancouver or a Montreal or a Calgary or even an Edmonton. So that's why they kind of need that sort of support. It's also why Gary Bettman's really hesitant to move to Quebec City. Because in case the Canadian economy goes to shit and it's kind of... Uh, it, it's the US Amplified. It's the best way to really describe it. So... Like, if they go to crap, guess what? They're probably going to have to move again. And that's why Batman was kind of hesitant, too. Although Winnipeg was a buyer, they wanted to move. I, I felt Arizona should have been the one to move. But Atlanta, like, they didn't have an arena. And Atlanta Spirit wanted nothing to do with them. So, tough cookies. And that's why I think Atlanta might get another shot at an NHL team in the future. Because guarantee me that they have better ownership than Atlanta Spirit. I will be on board with it. Especially if they go north by the battery. I think they'll have some success. Although the only issue there might be infrastructure and public transportation. But that's a different road to deal with. Our next breezy, it's a desperation move by New Jersey. It's Jake Allen. They're just trying to right the ship with anything possible. Vanacek's been a mess. Akira Schmidt, is, he's been disappointing. Their defense is, hasn't been good this year. They've just fired their coach. They're panicking. That's what's really happening. The Atlanta Coyotes, nah, they, they'll rename from the Coyotes. They're, I mean, there aren't really any Coyotes in Atlanta. Ian Genji for five. Hey, Tree, can we get Fs in the chat for Akira Toriyama, creator of Dragon Ball, passed away at age 68. Yes, sir. Fs in the chat for Akira Toriyama, creator of Dragon Ball. Let's do that Dragon Ball sound effect for uh, shits and giggles. I think I can have it here. So, uh, let me take a look, see here. Uh, 1,300 people here. Thank you all for watching and joining in this madness and bullshit. You're all crazy and I love you for it. We're just waiting for the madness. That's really what happens. 45 minutes until the end of trade deadline. Allegedly. But the time will tell. 
See the Tensil's down. Yep. That is a great sound effect, man. It, it's beautiful. Such a great sound effect, man. It is, it, it's, it's beautiful. It is fucking beautiful. Sorry, I'm not crying. I'm just... <laughs> have a stuffy nose. <coughs> Forgive me. That was that was very very unsightly. <laughs> it's over nine thousand. Oh, that's a classic, dude. Two thousand five, two thousand six memes. Oh, dude, classic. He's over nine thousand in heaven. Thomas Cherry, what do you think of the sharks trade so far? The Duclair trade and the Redeem Simic trade. Uh, the thing too is they're just trying to get pieces. I like Jack Thompson for them for Duclair, but mostly it's just getting depth. That that's all there really is to it. San Jose, they're deep in a tank. They're trying to figure it out. No, uh, Siaban, that is uh, from Dragon Ball. I think it's from Dragon Ball. That and the best part is like uh, going like trying to do a superpower for like twenty minutes and then finally emerging like after two episodes. And it's great. And then they emerge again and they emerge again and they emerge again. They get more and more and more and more and more powerful. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Whew. Oliver Dash is a Pens fan. We want Jake. No, the only thing we're going to be getting is uh, Jake the Snake Roberts. Maybe at the Monroeville Convention Center. That's still staying open, by the way. So uh, Jake the Snake Roberts is uh, might be able to come. We might get autographs there at Steel City Con. So that's... Or Comic Con or wherever we go. So, yeah. Atlanta Coast Joey. Jake Allen will need a U.S. working visa before joining the Devils. I thought Jake Allen was an American. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the trapezoid, I maybe. Question is, uh, it, it takes a bit. Sometimes you just have a team that randomly catches form. Once again, still 45 to 40 minutes left in the deadline. There are going to be more trades to come. So we'll probably get a big bang or two in the eventually. And I'm hoping for a few. But at the same time, it's, it's mainly waiting and seeing. It's all you can really do. See if there's anything else that happened. It's been relatively quiet on the Western front. They're just trying to negotiate right now. Yep, Jakob, Jakob Zaborl, Elliot, do you have anything, Mr. Friedman, please? Yep, a couple uh, claims in the meantime. Boris Kachuk getting claimed by Ottawa. So Kachuk is more or less a... Uh, he was one of the pieces that came back for Brendan Hagel. And Kachuk more or less just uh, hasn't really panned out. More of a top six upside forward. Hasn't done much of anything, more or less. So... They're hoping in Ottawa it could be something, but if he wasn't able to pan out in Chicago, I just don't know. A few other guys as well there. Let's move that out of the way. Sorry about that, boys. A few other trades as well. Uh, Tobias Bjornfoot has been claimed by Florida Panthers. So Tobias Bjornfoot. So he was one of the uh, former first-round picks of the LA Kings. Got claimed earlier by, I believe, Vegas. Got claimed back. So he's more or less just going to bounce around, maybe be organizational depth. More of an experimental piece. So never really panned out into what he could become. Had upside, but it's just never really translated, especially his offensive abilities. So it's just more or less organizational depth, if I say so, in general, if anything. And the other one is uh, William Lagason. It's been claimed by Anaheim. So Lagason was in Toronto. So this is... Uh, yeah, like Lagason was just he was take it or leave it like he didn't do much he was uh he's more or less being replaced by Labushkin and Edmondson so that's why Lagason is gone so take it or leave it there more of a brand name for Edmondson so it is an upgrade but it's not it really that much of an upgrade I don't know time will tell there but otherwise everyone else has cleared I think there were a few other ones that were on waivers per se NHL, do something. Do something, please. I beg you. 
Ooh, okay. And Chris Gross to Pharaoh, hey Tree, thoughts on the Gensel trade? Does it feel weird? Yeah, it does. Because honestly, they haven't been sellers since I was a senior in high school, and they traded guys like Mark Recchi to the Carolina Panthers. Uh, I think there were a few other guys that got traded as well. Or the Carolina Hurricanes, dude. I'm thinking football. Jesus. Oh, Cam Craig, uh, Kachuk's uh, stat line. Oh, dear. Dude, if we can look up that stat line real quick. Good lord. Wait, actually, let's look up the, uh, the forward cards here. Lars Eller, he'll, like, rumored to be traded. He might get traded. I'm hope like, he might not get much for him, but you could get something. Where is Mr. Boris Kachuk? Eh, not, not the worst I've seen, because Netsov was worse. So, it's, as I said, it's, it, it's... Way, it's just a shot in the dark. That, that's all you're really putting there. Come on, Saravelli. G give me some information, please. So here it is. So if Allen plays 40 or more games between this season and next, the New Jersey Devils will transfer a second instead of a third. Wait, Jake Allen has more than one year left on his contract? With a modified no- What? So, N New Jersey. Um, I, I don't get this at all if it's a two-year deal. I thought this was a rental. Like, they are panicking. Because Vanacek, he's trash. He's uh, gonna be- I mean, he'll probably end up getting traded. But Nico Dawes and Akira Schmid- you still have those guys in your system, so... Uh, what are you doing there, man? Like, Dawes had his moments. Like, he had a really good game last night. But still, it's... Uh... I... CJ, oh, dude, if they need more face punchers, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, Savard has been rumored on play. Oh, uh, Panzer Grenadier, if you may be trading for Soros, but once again, why trade for Jake Allen now if you're getting Soros in the offseason? Uh, finding Maria's Elvis, what trade pickup surprised you so far? Ooh, I would probably say the uh, Byron for Middlestat trade. I mean, you don't really see that out of nowhere. A few other trades to go over, though. I know there were some big ones in the back. A few others I never really got to because I got distracted. Anthony Mantha. He doesn't use his body. He's replacing Mark Stone, who might not play in the playoffs. So, uh, second and fourth round pick going their way. Curtis McDermott to punch paces. Ilya Labushkin going to babysit. Chris Tanev. This is the reason why Toronto wanted Tanev. Artem Krushnikov, a second and a third. So, Tanev should be a really solid piece for their playoff push. Uh, Dallas looks fucking loaded. If I say so myself. I mean, maybe one or two more pieces, but otherwise, oof. If Peter DeBoer doesn't fuck this up, they could be going to the final. And then Alex Nylander for Emil Benstrom, Sean Monahan, Elias Lindholm, Will Butcher for Maxim Sykovic. I, I probably butcher that name. And Cutter Gauthier being the hero of Pittsburgh by not wanting to go to Philadelphia. Probably our uh, greatest victory of the season. Jamie Drysdale in a second. Drysdale just can't stay healthy. I mean, he got injured in a game with the Penguins, which is... Uh, it's kind of sad. So I am mainly hoping that other things happen there. Uh, time War, as I said, maybe, may, uh, as I said, tree living has been relatively passive at deadlines. So we will see. Bull Muscle for 430, rent free, even though both our teams suck, dude. We got fucking crushed by the Caps last night. I mean, fucking crushed. Ooh, yeah, that, that's how a team dies, dude. It's, uh, it first starts with another shorthanded goal, because that's great. Penguins need more, give up more shorthanded goals. More. Absolutely more. It would be great. I absolutely fucking love it. Brazilian Fury for five. Tree, thank you for the entertainment as always. Thoughts on the Byron Middlestat trade? I mean, I think it's a great hockey trade for both teams. I think Buffalo can really help him thrive because he never really was able to mesh into his full potential in Colorado. And they had greater needs, which is a second line center to replace uh, Landis Gog and a few other guys. So, I, I feel like it fills needs for both teams. Buffalo could be really loaded if they do pan out. Because, once again, you're rolling with Middlestad. Uh, not Middlestad, sorry. 
Yeah, Rasmus Dahlin, Owen Power, Bowen Byram, Matthias Samuelson. I mean, that's your top four right there. And oh my god. Shh. You're fucking loaded, dude. Got a couple uh, decent, like, second pairing guys in your farm system. Oh, dude. Trade some of your forward depth to get that defenseman. Oh, Lord, dude. I thought they'd do better this year, but it is what it is. They're a young team. John Burns, Leafs make the Stanley Cup Finals or Lions make the Super Bowl, which is first. That's a tough call because, once again, like, with the playoffs, it's such a crapshoot. The Leafs could make a deep run, and the Lions, they were really close last year. I mean, if they didn't get burned on those fourth down calls and their defense didn't collapse, they'd have made the Super Bowl. So, you never know. You never know. I, I, I'm going to say Leafs because it always tends to fuck me like that, so we'll see. Jumps for five. Good afternoon, Tree. When will we be getting the MLB preview video? Probably in two weeks. Middle of March should be the time to do it. That's how I would do it. Rockin' Reggie for five. Hey, Tree, long-time viewer, first-time listener. Who is the dark side Phil of the NHL world? Devontae smith Pelly. Come on. DSP. Dude, th there's there's automatically your DSP of the NHL world. Let's be real here, man. The Knicker Man for two. You're going to watch the Medicare stream tonight on the forums. Hmm. I mean, I'm surprised Medicare's still kicking, especially with all that uh, stuff he's been dealing with. Oof. But, I mean, I might watch it, like, on archive. I probably got some stuff to do writing-wise, but, I mean, God bless that man for still kicking. I've rolled in circles with him in the past, but not, like, trolling forums or anything like that, but old chat rooms, like, from early 2010s in the online like the angry reviewing days so that's how i know him so i knew him as jim 81 jim <laughs> so uh that, that that's how it is so it's uh yeah that man is a treasure that's all i'm gonna say neo chaos x how long do you think the sharks are stuck in the dredges of the standings i give it about two to three years this is going to be a deep, deep, deep rebuild. Will Smith's going to be a bit away. William Eklund is, uh, you know, still developing. You've got a few of the guys that are still developing. I mean, they've got a lot of rot they got to get out. you got to get out of the Vlasic deal. Uh, Logan Couture, he's been dealing with issues. Like, I mean, he's been injured to hell all year. And then, I mean, Tomas Hurdle, do you trade him? So that is the question. Nick Lawal, I mean, wh why would you trade Olmark? That's the question. He's already vetoed one trade. Interesting. And Sean Harrison for 10. Do you think any of the Garen contracts that once again handcuffed my team would wave at the last moment? <sighs> Maybe. I don't know. I honestly don't know. That's the question, because some of that also is Paul Fenton. That, uh, like the uh, Zuccarello trade, that was Fenton. And then um, Fiala, like, some of those ended up working. But uh, Aiden King, they're never trading Crosby. They are never trading Crosby, dude. So it's, uh, unless he wants out and, like, I mean, they want to do right by him and be like, hey, look, you've done so much for this franchise. Pick the team you want to go to. We'll send you there. Like, what like they, what, what would they do with Ocposo in Buffalo? That's what I feel like. Uh, Honda Brook, I feel like it is anticlimactic. This is bullshit. I was expecting some moves to happen, and now it's just like it's quiet as hell. This is what always happens, and I fucking hate it. I feel like I'm jinxing everything. Yes, Alex, this is Sonic Unleashed. <laughs> Jake, Brad Tree Living's alarm is blurring, and he's fast asleep. I mean, dude, this that is Brad Tree Living. And yes, that is Windmill Isle. Apatos Windmill Isle. Yep, you are correct. It's like coffee shop music. It's nice. Serene. John Burns for thirteen ninety nine Canadian. Calgary Flames need 28 points in their last 20 games to qualify for the playoffs. Do you think they can do it? Well, you're looking at probably a 14-6 and six record. Maybe a couple overtime losses. So if you think like 12-8-4, 13-8-4, 13-7-2. I mean, possibly, but it's going to take a bit. You need Markstrom on his game. Or Dustin Wolf to come out of nowhere. Reverse Kilo, what goalie should Colorado trade for? Uh, whatever's available. I mean, Nedeljkovic would be probably a good get for them. Nedeljkovic has been solid. I mean, do you trust uh, Alex Georgiev and Justice Ananen to ride a playoff push? I don't know. There's your problem. Goose Egg, you are not free in Crosby. He's won three cups. 
Raphael Ledoux, where would you rank Montreal straight? Is Hughes already, Hughes already better than Bergevin? He got a first round pick. He got two first round picks for Sean Monahan. I think he's done all right. Well, Matthew, like, Sonic Unleashed at least had a decent soundtrack in some regards. It was a weird premise. It was like, it, it, it felt like it was just like a game for furry fetish. Yep, uh, headphone, I did see that uh, Boston could get Maroon. Dude, if Matthew Gordon, if uh, Colorado gets Allmark, oh, baby. That, that is a arms race. Jared Russell for two. How about them Penguins mid-2010 Red Wings? No, go further. Late 2010s Red Wings. Like 2016, 2017. I mean, I, I had them as the Red Wings. I didn't expect they'd be this bad. That's the problem, Jared. And Sean Pinkerton for five. You think Kyle said deal on Gensel once the Caps made 4 nothing last night out of Rage Quit? Because why do four forwards and conditional picks make sense? Buyer's market. That's the real problem. Because the real thing is, you brought in Michael Bunting to make the salaries work out. And also because FSG still has demands to maintain that would be competitive with this core. Which I don't agree with, but FSG wants to sell tickets. So, that's why Dubas has done a lot of the moves that he has. Like, it, that, he has his marching orders from FSG, which is compete with this core. Which is why you brought in Eric Carlson, you brought in the bottom six depth for the veterans. And that's why you tried to make it work and it has failed miserably. So... Well, C-dubs, uh, the fetish stuff didn't happen until the early 2000s, I feel like. Tony D'Angelo to the Leafs, I wish. That'd be hilarious. It's their John Klingberg replacement. No, oh, sorry. Nose is a little congested. Sean Pinkerton, oh, sorry. Jared Russell, a deep run won't fix the Jets' attendance issues. The fans can't afford it. They have admitted this and are going to try selling to corporations now. What corporations are there in Winnipeg? Like, the corporate market in Winnipeg isn't as deep as, say, a Toronto, Vancouver, Calgary, Montreal. Which is why Winnipeg has trouble. I mean, especially with the Canadian economy, it's just a mess. There's your real issue right there. Flacco Walker for five. Any truth to the rumors that the Crosby and the Penguins are listening to offers? I can't seem to believe anything like that. I don't think so. I think you're not going to go down that road at least for a couple years. So, I think... I would say Crosby's going to have a real issue there. Oh, actually, Zaboro, they're trading a third round pick as well with Peak? Dear God. Okay. Okay, that's uh, that's uh, that's definitely a move, Boston. Definitely a move. Yeah, I don't want to add LeBron. Yeah, there's a whole lot of nothing going on right now, and it'd be great if things happen. This is uh, this is this is wonderful. This is uh, truly uh, one of the streams of our time, and I'm sorry that it's. Uh, I, I wish there were more going on, but I actually have a few ideas. I'm thinking about taking callers later on on Twitter Spaces, and I'll have my phone up to the mic, and we can just talk hockey. I feel like that would be interesting and like relief. Mega Doomer for 10. Favorite NHL game you've seen in person? Oh, dude. Uh, game 2, Stanley Cup Finals, Pens and Sharks. Connor Sherry OT game winner, baby. That or the 2019 game against the Capitals, I believe it was game 4? and Or game 3 or 4 when like Latang was out, Malkin was out, Crosby, or like Crosby was out too and it just... It ended up being just this defensive stalwart. That was like the most intense arena atmosphere I had seen for a Pens game. Oh, dude, Zuzi, Kevin Weeks always teases on Twitter. Let's be real, man. Captain Bynum, I'm sorry I have to know. Are you also YouTuber Young Junko? Because you have the exact same voice. I've never heard of Young Junko. So I, I'll i have to look him up later. Because, like, they're, like, I, this is news to me. It is absolute news to me. Because, like, I will, I'll have to look this up. Let me. He is literally a trash can. I review games and movies and other useless vomit. Ooh. I'll have to look him up later. I'll have to watch his stuff. Thanks for the information, Captain. Jamie Sapochnikov for two. Do the Stars take the next step and claim the cup? Maybe. My real concern is DeBoer because I've seen this happen in San Jose, Vegas, New Jersey, and a few other places. Like, he will lead a team to the playoffs and potentially deep runs with talent. I don't know if he has enough to get you to a cup. That's been the big issue with DeBoer. Can he break that curse? If he can, power to him. And Dallas, this is the team to do it. Like, they are loaded. If they, I mean, they uh, they need Ottinger to up his game a bit more. And I think they could take on anyone. 
OMKI, that, that's Vegas. You're in the middle of your window. If you want to go, go. If you want, you had the taste of it before, you're going to go get it again. Same thing with the Penguins. James Lindsley for five. Okposo traded for a pack of gum and the Bills are releasing everyone. Hide the tables, dude. Okposo requested to be traded to Florida. They're just doing kind by him. So that that's all that really is there. Zach Lesk for five. Panthers for a best value trades. A total of three mid to late round picks and a prospect who was never going to crack the Cats lineup to add Shenko and Okposo is wild. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're just loading for the deadline. They needed scoring depth and they're getting it with Okposo and Tarasenko. So they're filling up their roles. Clarence Price wins the video on Doc Rivers. He's been marinating the slow cooker for a while now, and the roast is long overdue. P.S. You were right about the 76ers. Well, the problem with the 76ers is Embiid's out. Like, without Embiid, they're screwed. And they've been trash. Like, they lost to a uh, Grizzlies team without John Morant. And Doc is just... Yeah, I mean... He's actually been doing a little better in Milwaukee. He was they were they were garbage in the beginning with him. And I'm like, dude, you want to fix your coaching issues and you bring in Doc Rivers? Oh, dude, bad. And Max Scarrow, thoughts on Olympic hockey. I mean, the the NHL should play in him. I mean, Russia loves it, and it's just problem is Olympic hockey without like NHL players, it's just not the same. It's just like a bunch of European players, old vets, like, oh hey, Noah Welch. I I didn't realize he was still playing in the NHL. Brian Gianta, Mark Arcobello, former penguin. Jordan, uh, Eric Stahl. I mean, that's really what you're going on to. Nick for 10. The thoughts on the Carolina's goalie situation? I like the pickups we made, just hope we can stay healthy. Thanks for all your work, Tree, even though you're a Steelers. Pens fan, cheers, brother. Thank you, Nick. Main thing with Carolina, they got Freddie Anderson back. He came back, I believe, a couple days ago from his blood clotting issue. If you get him back to peak form, you're not going to have trouble. anti Rontos on waivers. Pyotr Kachekov's decent as a backup, even though he's been hovering around a 900 save percentage. Goaltending's been the biggest issue for Carolina. If they can fix it, they can go deep. Or they can deal with unspeakable pain like they did last year. So, more or less... Oh! We actually have a trade! Thank fucking God! Matt Dumba's going to the Lightning. You're probably getting... If Zucker's the same principle, probably a fifth to a seventh round pick. You're not getting much for Dumba because Dumba has just been... He has not been good this year. He has not been able to achieve his offensive performance as he has in the past. And he's been tapering for a good bit. So this is defensive depth. Tampa Bay is panicking. And they know it because they have been on a skid. They've been on a deep skid. That's why they're bringing in Duclair. That's why they're bringing in Dumba. That's why they're bringing in a few other guys because like, the hounds of Capel have really come for them. And without Sergachev, they're in deep shit. So they are screaming first round exit right now. And I mean screaming. Thank God we actually have a trade. Holy shit. Fucking incredible. Yep, that's what I thought, Matt. Anderson Anderson did play last night. So I know he is back. So there's your big thing on Carolina's goalie. Your key is Freddie Anderson. That's your deadline acquisition there. And John Burns, do you think the NHL should steal the shorthanded goals room from the Professional Women's Hockey League? I have not heard that rule. And if that it means that they get double goals for it, uh, I'm not looking forward to it as a Pens fan because they give up way too many shorthanded goals and the Flyers have the most shorthanded goals and I'm not looking forward to that at all. An edge knight for five. Hey, Tree, can we pour one out for Akira Toriyama? Also, the Steelers really going to sign Mr. Unlimited Diarrhea. Dude, if the Steelers sign Russell Wilson, I'm going to make a quick video on that and mostly what it's going to be is me in front of like a fake green screen talking about how Steeler Nation, let's ride. And just doing that over and over and over again. That or maybe just like coping myself into believing that things happen. Yep, the Yotes swap a late pick. That sounds about right. Especially with Zucker and Dumba's lack of performance. I mean, Arizona's just trying to get something for him. Ooh, Jordan Schmaltz got it. Former St. Louis Blue, Jordan Schmaltzy. Schmaltzy, Schmaltzy. Let's see here. Oh, it, it updated automatically. Yep. Dumba to Tampa Bay is picking up steam. Yeah. We are so desperate for attention and news. We're learning about Matt Dumba going to Tampa Bay. Oh, good Lord. Good, good Lord. Shh. 
Akon for two. What would you grade Carolina's trade deadline as? Too early to tell. There may be another move or two coming. I like what they've done so far. I mean, with Gensel, you're getting a gamer. You are getting a quality top six forward, real playoff warrior, and I'm going to miss him. So take care of him down there. And they didn't have to give up big prospects to get him. Like, they're going all in, and they're not trading a ton. Because Netsov is a huge gamble. But if it doesn't work out, you only gave up a third-round pick. No biggie. John Burns for 279 Canadians. So Penguins are the 70s Red Wings. Uh, they're not the Dead Wings yet. Give it a few more years, then they'll be the Dead Wings. Max Carroll for five Canadian. Which country wins the Hockey World Cup? Probably our European team. Germany. Sweden. Because mostly it depends on who's, get el who's eliminated from the playoffs, who gets invited. That's more the real thing there. Cameron Erland, Danny Briere masterclass today. We'll see. We'll see. Busy mark for two. Who's getting banished from Pennsburg next? Riley Smith, Alex Nedeljkovic, or Lars Eller? There's your questions. Liam Loftus, come on, Rags. Give me Bushnevich. Bushnevich is also in play. I would love to see him go. And honestly, the Rangers should have never traded him. But I know, I get why they did it, but none of their wing options in the interior have worked out. The only one that has come close is, let's be real, it's been Alexi Lafreniere. Or Lafreniere. I know it's Lafreniere. I think it sounds better with Lafreniere. Fuck you. I'll say Lafreniere. And Jared Brussel will call him dumbass in mini. Uh, I mean, if you have poor defensive awareness, that's what happens. I mean, Dumba... It's uh, mainly Spain hockey team win. I mean, Spain, I believe, does have a national team. It's just not good. Mexico has a national hockey team. Like, there are a lot of national hockey teams, but I mean, like, Armenia has, like, a U-20 team that always gets crushed, like, 80 to nothing. <laughs> oh, dude, I'll, uh, Chubbin, I'll actually bring in Puktoku later. Yeah, I was thinking about doing that later, too, because there's nothing else going on right now. John Burns, the shorthanded goal rule. If you score a goal, player gets out. Ooh. So you got to kick out. So like, so if, uh, for example, last night, Tom Wilson scores a goal, they kick out Crosby. Is that what it is? And a Zetter, certainly one of the trade deadlines of our times. We, uh, I mean, all the trades happened early. Yeah, Speed Demon, I mean, the question is like, would Bushnevich work? I think St. Louis might still be trying to gun for a playoff spot. That's the only reason why they might not trade him. Oh, it's like pronouncing Poulin from Canadian PWHL Montreal. Is it Poulin? And not like Patrick Poulin or Sammy Poulin? Team Kazakhstan in NHL 2002. <laughs> team Kazakhstan. Yep, the Philippines do have a hockey team. We actually look up. Let's look up the national hockey teams. Yeah, the IAHF has rankings. And we got nothing else going on. Let's look up the IAHF hockey rankings. You know, the usual stuff. And uh, no, I don't want hockey. I don't want to talk about Clem Costin. Let's get some of this stuff out of here. We got too many tabs. No, I, I, I don't want to learn about Team Russia or uh, Team um, Independent People because of certain geopolitical situations. Yeah, Czechia, Slovakia, Denmark's really coming to its own. Norway's still up there. Kazakhstan. But Kazakhstan's not bad. Austria's really starting to improve. Same as Slovenia. Team Italy, Team Hungary, Great Britain, Romania, Team Japan, Team China. I mean, there are a couple guys that have come out of Japan. Yutaka Fukufuji. China, too. I mean, the Kunlun Red Star. Yep. Oh, Valerie Nutrushkin returning tonight for Colorado. That's huge, too. Because I know he was in player's assistance for a hot minute. So if he's coming back, that's huge. There's another deadline acquisition for Colorado right there. Team Estonia, Team Spain, Team Israel. Jesse Pollock. Let's go. Team Iceland, Team Aussieland, Bulgaria. Yep, Mexico is a national team. The United Arab Emirates have a hockey team. Dude, that is fascinating. What is the... The UAE... Hold on. Yeah, currently ranked 48, the United Arab Emirates. Let's go on uh, Elite Prospects, see where it is. 
Yep, deadline is at three. We got 15 minutes left. Drano for two brings me back to childhood with the NHL 0102 music. Yeah, dude, I love that stuff, man. I love the NHL 0102 music. It is the good shit right there, man. And I mean the good shit. Yeah, the Emirates actually have a hockey league. The Dubai White Bears, the Abu Dhabi Storms, the Galaxy Warriors, the Dubai Mighty Camels. Uh, it's a lot of uh, Russian players. I wonder if there are any old uh, NHL players or it's all just there. Let's see. Uh, Damian Karinji, Daniel Glukich. I'm probably butchering these names. I'm sorry. Vladislav Lamakin, Yuri Lamakin. 66 points in 15 games, though. Not bad. Carter McElwain. Is that Dave McElwain's kid? Ryan Bunker, Yanko Kuchera, Philip Bobal, Max Barrington. Yeah, I don't think there's any former NHLers here, but it's... Uh, any United Arab Emirates players here? I think most of them are probably going to be naturalized citizens. Like Ilya Cherikov and Artem Klavdiev. Like, they're probably not UAE citizens, per se, but they're more or less just nationalized from playing hockey. Like, for example, if uh, an American plays in Switzerland for so long, he becomes a Swiss citizen. Over a matter of time, he gets citizenship. Ali Hal Haddad. That's probably your biggest name. Fahid Medbuana. Ayez Al Muharib. I'm, I'm butchering these names. I'm so sorry. Abdullah Al Humaydi. I mean, dude, I didn't realize the UAE even had a hockey league. That's, that's amazing. I thought I had the name up, but I guess not. Ooh. But I mean, dude, uh, Belgium, Chinese Taipei, also known as Taiwan. Should be Taiwan. New Zealand, Luxembourg, Thailand, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, Hong Kong has a national hockey team. Bosnia, Herzegovina, South Africa, Kuwait, Singapore, Malaysia, Georgia, Iran, the Philippines. Yep, you mentioned the Philippines. The Democratic People's Republic, North Korea. Yep, I do know they have a hockey team. Mongolia and Indonesia. Mongolia has a hockey team. Genghis Khan is coming back, baby. He's going to take the hockey world by storm. And it's the Mongolian national hockey team. Let's fucking do it. Oh, jeez. Uh-oh. Big trade for the Penguins. Magnus Helberg going to Florida. Magnus Helberg. He actually did all right in a cup of coffee stint for uh, the NHL. They're more or less just trying to get pieces for Taylor Gauthier and Joel Blomqvist. That's what they're doing this for. He actually did all right for the brief moments he played. So who is the goalie coming back? It's a guy named uh, Ludovic Weber. Yeah, this is... Uh, it's organizational depth. Like, it's he's not going to do much. He's more or less just... There for a year, make sure the bodies work. They just wanted to get a piece for him. Like, uh, Helberg wasn't going to get much. So it's organizational depth. Very, very sad. Very, very, very sad. It's crazy. We actually have a trade. And there's nothing going on. Yep, the deadline is in about 10 minutes, by the way. So, oh, Pete W for two. The short end of goal score shorty player out of the box. Ooh. It's actually not a bad rule. But... I mean, the Penguins would lose a lot of power plays. 30% off all bras. How could I pass up that deal? <laughs> oh, man. Internet is so weird. Oh, of course, that is not Sergei Bobrovsky. No, that's not Spencer Knight. I, I expected Spencer Knight. Patches isn't leaving, so it's not. Mm -hmm. No, Kim Jong-un. No, it's not Kim Jong-un. Uh, John Burns, 279. Last decade, Australia won Tier 3 level hockey. Yeah. NWO Matt for 10 Tree. What's your thought of the Rangers trade deadline? I think they've done okay so far. More or less getting depth. Well, Ro Venberg to replace um, Philip Heedle. But it's more or less. Well, Chevy Roll, South Africa. I don't know if they have the ability to get ice rinks. There's probably not much access to learn how to ice skate down there. They probably only have a couple ice rinks. And most of those are probably in the cities. Especially in a place like South Africa. I feel like you're more or less learning to play football or uh, soccer in South Africa. Cricket, too. Zach Coates, nothing on Shikrin going on. Oh, we do have some trades coming in. Oh, boy. I hope we have some trades coming in. We, we, we need trades. We, we need lots of trades, for the love of God. Ten minutes left until the deadline. Please get something done. <laughs> Okay. 
Andreano for five. The opening video for NHL 01 got me so hyped. I would imagine myself hoisting the cup, put it up on stream. Oh, dude, not the NHL 01, dude. Uh, the ones that got me hyped were NHL 97 through NHL 2000. Dude, those were some amazing, amazing intros. Oh, oh, like 01 wasn't bad, but like those ones had like the actual in-game cuts. They were, they were incredible. Ooh, Jack Roslovic's going to the Rangers. We have another trade. Jack Roslovic going to the Rangers. More depth coming out. So it's a mid-round pick in 2026. Thank the Lord. Jack Roslovic has... Uh, he did had flashes, but for the most part, he has had a very down year in Columbus. So you're more or less using him as a third-line center. Maybe, hopefully, he can get a bounce back. But as I said, has his moments, but he's not... You're more or less just trying to get something for him. He was involved in the Patrick Laine and Pierre-Luc Dubois trade. So, that's Jack Roslovic's claim to fame. Very frustrating player, if it means anything. NHL hits intros? Oh, those were classic, man. Hurricanes just blew up their entire team. McKinnon to the Oats. <laughs> I wish. Oh, push it by garbage? Yeah, Kevin Fry, that definitely was. Triple A. Sabres fans keep talking about how they need new coaching staff. How many coaches and GMs have they had over the last 13 years before they get it right? Problem with Granado is he's been good for what they are. I don't know if he's going to be able to get them to that next level. It's like with the Penguins and Michel Therrien. He was enough to build that structure, get that support, really develop that team. But he was never able to get them over that hump. Which is why they brought in someone else to do that. Which was Dan Bilesma. Or, for example, Mike Johnston to Mike Sullivan. Or Mike Yo to Craig Berube. Rumor is Tony D'Angelo is a weef, leaf. Oh, Lord. Tony D'Angelo. Oh, yay. Oh, why yay, oh, mighty. The problem is they're all licensed stuff now. There's no original soundtrack. It's, uh, it's rough. It's, uh, it's, it, it's pretty rough. And per Bagnota, the Golden Knights have been making traction on another big move. Is this Bushnevich? Yep. Uh, for a player with term, we'll see if we can get this to the finish. David Pagnota is reporting this, so time will tell there. Oh boy. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, the problem with Wembley, as I said, it's all like just, it's all licensed stuff. Not much there. Luke Katz or Kate's Katz. Thoughts on the Jets making a playoff run. I mean, they have the goaltending to do it. They have the young core to do it. They have the, uh, they have the depth to do it. If there's a year, this is it. But I think you can say that for a lot of teams. Sidney Crosby to the Flyers for Carter Hart. I'm going to grab a drink real quick. I have a few ideas as to how to uh, spice this up a little bit. But in the meantime, uh, I'm hoping some trades happen. And I know there's going to be some trolls. Oh, Brian.
there were trades. I'm sorry about that, kids. I'm sorry about the wait. Ugh. Chair deadline to the Sharks for cues for considerations. <laughs> chair to the Leafs. Oh, the chair would give a great physical presence. Great physical presence for the Leafs. Especially on their back end. Oh, that would be beautiful. <sighs> chair is playing on the pen stop power play. It wouldn't be worse than what they are now. Is there another trade besides Roslovic? No. It's just one of the uh, deadlines of our time. One of the deadlines of our time. I'm not a happy camper. Hmm. Sorry, my fat ass needs to eat. Roslovic to New York Rangers confirmed. It's a fourth round pick that becomes a third if the Rangers reach the Stanley Cup Finals. Not a bad piece of work for the Rangers. It's depth, and I think they'll accept making the finals. So they're not, like, all in like last year when they brought in Tarasenko and Kane and a couple other guys. But um, they're, they're gunning. Ooh, there's the trade. Tomas Hurdles going to Vegas. There's the guy with term. I was talking earlier about what do you do with Tomas Hurdle? Okay. Yep, here it is. Vegas acquiring Tomas Hurdle from San Jose. Thank God. There's your trade. There is your big trade right there. Tomas Hurdle going to the Vegas Golden Knights. He was one of the big contracts. So if I load this up here. Tomas Hurdle had a no-move clause, and he has a contract for the next six years. So the return might be pretty depressed, especially with the Vegas' cap situation. But this... This is a big acquisition. Here I am thinking I was gonna... be bored. Tomas Hurdle can still play. I mean, he's quality. It depends how much you got back in return. Oh, here we go. Colin Miller going to the Jets. More organizational depth for Winnipeg. Probably gets a mid-round pick. I mean, Colin Miller what he wasn't what he was in Vegas. What? God damn it. Yeah, as I said, he's, he's more organizational depth right now. He's still not bad, but it's... Maybe a third pairing role. Maybe playoffs, but... Yeah, big trade coming up. Tomas Hurdle. MKI, okay, uh, they'll deal with it next year. Yeah, I, Cordell, I thought with that contract he was stuck there, but San Jose is like tanking, tanking. Mm -hmm. And as reached 3 p.m., pencils down, turn in your papers. Everything's done. There are probably going to be more trades coming in through the pipeline after this. But the big move right now, Tomas Hurdle going to the Winnipeg, or sorry, the Vegas Golden Knights. 
And Vegas has made some big moves. They brought in Noah Hannafin. They brought in Anthony Mantha. But I don't want Vancouver. Tomas Hurdle. Colorado loading up as well. So Colorado is trying to load for nuclear arsenal. Vegas is going for another cup. And it's pretty obvious. And uh, and to be honest, like the draft picks are meaningless because you're going for a cup and you're trying to replace Mark Stone. He might come back for the playoffs. Keyword is might. But getting Mantha and Hurdle is not a bad consolation prize. You could afford Hurdle because Stone was on LTIR. They'll probably have another team. They'll probably be 50 per, uh, uh, some retention from San Jose. There might be a retention from another team too. Uh, CJ, free agents, first rounders for Hurdle. We'll see. Ethan, yeah, I think the Pens better have more moves. Lily D. Williams, well, let's look at Cap Friendly. I think Vegas does have some first rounders to move. Yeah, they have this year's first, which is conditional. There's another conditional pick. That was traded for Hannafin. Six and tw second in 2026, third this year, couple sixth. They do have some prospects. They do have Brendan Brisson. They have Balval Dorofeyev. They do have a few other guys as well. Yeah, Brisson. They have uh, Jakub Demek. I don't think Jakub Demek is that good per se, but they do have some pieces they can give up. So probably Brisson's going the other way. Dorofeyev might be going the other way. But yeah, Alec Martinez is on LTIR. Stone's probably going on LTIR to make this work. Yeah, Martinez might be going on LTIR. That's the way that they make this work. And Laner, it's just... I don't know if he's coming back. That's a shame. So let's see here. Yeah, Project Saint. That, that, that makes more sense. I mean, there has to be some retention or a big player moving. Because if you look at Vegas's cap friendly, uh, the one to really move, like you're not moving Eichel, you're not moving Carlson, you're not moving any of these stuff. You're not moving Nick Wall. Mantha, Stevenson, Colas, or no. Um, Braden McNabb you might move, but why would why would you... They, they want Braden McNabb. Yeah, Martinez, he's not moving. Nick Haig, maybe? But even then, Nick Haig is still a solid piece for that back end. So I don't think it's a major piece coming back. Maybe uh, a smaller, like, minor piece. Um, but otherwise, it's probably going to be picks and prospects. That's that's my best bet. Maybe it's a three-way trade. Phil Kessel was not signed. Ah. Come on, you got to sign Phil Kessel. He's the American dream. Fuck off. Hold on. I got a shit post about this. Sorry. No Phil Kessel. This it's a very sad sight. Come on, he had to sign Kessel just for the memes. For the memes, dude. Now I'm just sad. Yeah, no American dream. It's, it's very sad. Uh, Judas, uh, nothing yet, but we'll see. If Toronto did not make any moves, it's, uh, it's, it's very disappointing. Vancouver stays relatively quiet. They probably didn't like the prices and they probably didn't want to give up big prospects. Let's see if the Leafs made any moves.
trying to see if uh, there's anything coming back. Doesn't look like it. Mm. Excuse me. Yep. Yep. Meanwhile, the Montana's Brewery. Yep, there is some F Zero music. Actually, multiple F Zero music. F Zero regular, the original F Zero, and F Zero GX. Well, it depends if Kessel wants to play. I mean, Kessel doesn't have to prove anything, unfortunately. Uh, the Oilers, I don't know what's happening there. They did bring in uh, Adam Henrique and uh, Sam Carrick, but I don't know if anything else is coming. Yeah, Bramo. Leafs got Edmondson a couple days ago, but I mean, it's that's an underwhelming return. Him and Labushkin, more for defensive snarl. Well, Project Saint. I don't know if you'd trade Chandler Stevenson because Stevenson is really good for his cap hit. Uh, uh, Judas. No news on the Yotes. The only moves have been um, Jason Zucker and Matt Dumba being traded for later picks. Oh, Dane. The, the Vegas is getting cap space because Mark Stone went on LTIR. Alec Martinez is probably going on LTIR. And there's probably a lot of retention going the other way. They'll deal with this in the offseason. Uh, Cesar Garcia, like, the problem with the Yukon video is it's always claimed for the music that I used. So I could probably bring it up without the music, but for whatever reason, it always goes back up and down, up and down, up and down. So it's it's the music montage. That's the problem. Uh, tree, uh, Busy Mark, I've never listened to the Armored Core soundtracks. I'll have to listen to those, dude. It would probably be amazing. Oh, dude, Patrick, Vegas ain't cheating. They didn't break any rules, brother. And Habs are done for the day, too. Two firsts for Hurdle with heavy salary retention. If David Savard is staying, makes sense there. Let's see what else is going on here. I did want to try one thing. And I'm thinking about taking some live callers on uh, Twitter Spaces, whatever it is. So I was thinking that, and I know I, I figured it'd be interesting to uh, to try and call, but I figure if I do it like this, let's see if I if I roll like this and people call in to the uh, shit extravaganza line, maybe I <laughs> put in I I threw it on Twitter. So if you guys want to call in, I'll. I'll see if I can answer some callers, make it a little interesting, I figure. I wish I could do it on my PC, but unfortunately I'm not able to. So, if you guys want to join in, it's uh, available on Twitter or X or whatever the fuck you want to call it, I guess. But in the meantime, uh, we do have some extra streams coming in. And uh, yeah, there are, there are a lot of people that want to listen in. So, just be careful. If you do request, make sure that you're able to talk. So, well, uh, I expect a lot of people to call me fat, like Mark Madden, if he's taking callers too. But, uh... We'll see here. Uh, see, Kyle. What's up, brother? How you doing? Hey, Tree. I just want to say that I am extremely upset with the way that the league has been letting Vegas get away with all this cap circumvention. It's not cap circumvention. They're not breaking any rules, brother. If you look at Vegas right now, I mean, LTIR eliminates their space. Mark Stone has been injured, so that's why they were able to free up that space. Alec Martinez probably going on LTIR, so that's that's why it's not actually cheating. They're just they are just following what the NHL says. I'm surprised the loophole's still open though. Yeah, it's frustrating. The NHL needs to close it, but I don't think the other teams will want it to close. Well, because other teams are using it. That's the real thing. Yeah. All right. Um. I can pass the mic on to someone else. Now. Absolutely, brother. Thank you for being on, Kyle. Appreciate you, my man. But here we go. Zach. Let's see here. Zach, brother, how you doing, my man? Zach, you there? Hello? Hey, what's up, brother? How you yeah, doing? I'm on, my, I'm on my 
my PC, so... It's all good, man. I mean, you can listen in on PC. You can't host on a PC for whatever reason. Oh, okay. Yeah, the hurdle return just got in. So. Ooh, let's see the hurdle return. Wait, I, wait. I, it, it just got deleted. I, I, they said two firsts and heavy retention. That's the it rumor. Just got, it just got deleted. Hmm, so they're probably... Drag probably, got, probably got out a little early, yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, it was... It was yeah, he said it was a first and twenty-five edge drum hurdle, seventeen percent retained. Seventeen. A third yep. and twenty-five and a third and twenty-seven. D yep. Edstrom is, yep. Friedman Edstrom has is, come out saying Edstrom is a key part of the trade to San Jose. Edstrom was their first round pick this past year. Yeah. Edstrom mid. He's so mid. Eh. I wouldn't say mid. But, it's yeah, it, it's a prospect. Uh, you, did you see that Pittsburgh's done? Pretty much. I did not. No, I'm surprised by yeah, that. I figured that was, Lars Eller would have been on the move. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, Hunter uh, Dewar you, you, traded. What's up? Hunter Dewar traded. Hunter Dewar? A yes. Hunter Dewar from Minnesota? Probably for organizational yeah. depth purposes. Dewar never really got a, like a, a, an etch in the NHL. So it's more yeah. or less just trying to get something for him, I feel like. Nothing from Jimmy No yet. No, nothing yet there. I'm waiting. I need Dallas to make one more move. <sighs> Probably for depth purposes, I feel like. But otherwise, I think give they should. me. Cap, give me Liberty, give me Fire, give me Capo Kakinen, or I retire. Uh, Capo Kakinen? I don't know if he's the right move to make, but... Uh, I mean, he, he's, like, he's like 17th in goal save above expected this year. Hmm, interesting. But yeah, it looks like... Seven... Fucking team. Definitely, man. All right, I'm going to let you go, my man. Thanks, yeah. Zach. Thanks for calling in, my man. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, Niles Ayer. You're up next, brother. How you doing? Or you'll just disconnect. Niles, I thought you were on, my man. Native Wisconsin. You're on, brother. Yo, oh. I'm still I'm still here. Oh, sorry about that, brother. I, I didn't realize that, my man. How you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, as a Bruins fan, I'm just kind of like miffed about this whole Omar situation. It seems like this past week has been a bit of a shit show, and now, oh, they had a deal this morning, but Omar nixed it, and it's now like, all right, this is going to continue. I love the fact he's still here, but I feel like this is just going to keep going on and on and on until eventually something happens, just because we have two really good goalies, and we probably could have gotten some center depth in a you know say a three-team trade with old market involved i think what happens is he's probably getting traded in the offseason yeah that's what i think too mm, i think so uh static uh 17 percent it breaks it to about 6.5 million for uh vegas to pay in salary <laughs> david h it sounds like he's talking to himself <laughs> i don't know about that man i mean it's close uh, but I mean, I I'm surprised Olmark was actually offered in trades. I felt like you could have rolled with two in the postseason, but what do I know? I mean, maybe if there was a, I, I guess if hurdle was available, you know, but you know, I don't know when hurdles coming back, but you know, I wanted like a top six center and if Olmark was going to be the price for one of those guys, then fuck it. You have to do it. Absolutely, man. Yep, it looks like the trade's official on um, on um, Vegas Golden um, TSN. Just one first-round pick, David Edstrom, the first-round pick this past year, third-round pick in 2025, and a third in 2027. So they're hoping Vegas does poorly in 2025, but it's uh, t they're just trying to get rid of the hurdle contract. Yeah. All right, man. I'm going to let you go, brother. Thanks for joining in. All right, thanks. Thank you, brother. Sorry about that, Nate. Oh, no worries, Tree. How you doing there, guy? I'm doing good, brother. How are you? Uh, not too bad. Uh, I'm uh, not a huge hockey guy, but listening to you, I'm doing the most painful thing a Wisconsinite has to do and rooting for a Chicago team so the Blackhawks are my new team. <sighs> my condolences, brother. I mean, they're not good <laughs> this year, but uh, everyone's hurt. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to say that uh, I... Uh, your uh, your your local videos and legacies of failure have gotten me through a lot in 2023, 2024. Love uh, what you do and keep on keeping on. Definitely, thank you, brother. I appreciate you. 
All right, looks like uh, you're off the air, brother. So let's go to uh, Jack Hanley, free agent, also known as uh, Joel Hanley's probable brother in the meantime. How you doing, brother? Jack, you there? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. What's up, man? How are we doing, Tree? Doing good, man. How are you? anything that I have to complain about, it's the log jam that Steve Eiserman has created at the defensive position. We got Justin Hall tonight in as our seventh defenseman, and we have Simon Edmondson waiting just in the woods doing nothing and racking up a whole bunch of points in the AHL. It's just, it's frustrating. I hope we get to the playoffs, but now that Larkin's out, it's just, it's a whole mess. Yeah, the problem with like Larkin is your make or break. I mean, you had those issues in January exactly. with Larkin out. And the problem is, like, you have a lot of guys, but are just, like, you're just hogging space. Like, Sherratt is more of a defensive guy. Petrie's not bad. Hole's not bad. But, I mean, once again, as you said, Edvinson is just rotting in the minor leagues. I mean, he's going to need time in the NHL. It feels like the opposite of uh, the end of the streak when we were just kind of a playoff team hoping to get hot. I mean, without Larkin, this team's lost, and it feels like... We don't really have much of a desire to actually win. I mean, granted, we have played the best two teams in the NHL, arguably, the past two games in Colorado and Florida. Mm. But it's still really hard for me to kind of have hope for that. At the same time, I think uh, Detroit, I think you're just happy with making the playoffs and finally making that Absolutely. emergence. Absolutely. The, the NHL is better when uh, the Red Wings are good. So. Yep. Also, it looks like, yep, yeah, uh, Sarah Velli just came out and said that uh, – there, they had a deal on the table to move Linus Allmark to the Kings that didn't end up crossing the finish line. This might have meant oh, Pierre-Luc wow. Dubois was going to the Bruins. That was, I saw those rumors come out, which would Everybody's have been... Diva. Oh, Connor DeWar going to the Leafs, which is uh, definitely going to break it. All right, well, thank you, Tree. I appreciate you. Take care. Definitely. Thank you, brother. Thank you for joining me. All right, let's go with AJ47 Connor. Brother, how you doing, man? Do, 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 yeah, I'm trying this out for the first time. We'll see how this goes. AJ47, how you doing, brother? Hello, Tree. Um, massive, long-time listening fan. Um, just curious to hear what you think of the Canucks not, Canucks not doing anything at the deadline. I'm kind of surprised by that. There were some rumors that they were in on Jake Ensel. They wanted to move and take care of a few other things as well. And more or less that um, I kind of felt like that um yeah i mean th- th- i don't know if they want to really shed prospects or i think they're fine with the current system they have and they don't want to mess up anything that's the only thing i can think of there so i i would say their biggest acquisition was probably keeping elias patterson around yeah i mean the pete deal for us it seems like an absolute um still like for us to get him under 12 million a year is absolutely brilliant but um yeah, just one other thing. Just surprised them with your boys. The Pens sending Gensel to Carolina. I thought you could have got something much better for him. Yeah, I mean, it mostly depends. Like, I think Dubas really likes Michael Bunting, and he, they wanted a bulk return. I think that's the thing. The prospect system's so barren that, like, those guys will automatically flush into our top ten, five, top ten, ten prospects. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough. I don't know also if you saw that... Um, Connor Duar is going to Toronto. They just announced that now. Yep, I did see that. So it's more like bottom six depth. He's I don't know if he's going to do a ton, but it's uh, it's something, I guess. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, thanks for all the great work, Tree. Definitely. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. All right, man. I'll take a few more... Do-do-do. I'll take a few more callers in a few seconds, though. I just wanted to... Uh, Take care of a few things in the meantime. A couple new trades coming in. Uh, Connor DeWar going to Toronto. Colin Miller going to the uh, Winnipeg Jets. So I know a lot of people were saying that it's... Uh, yeah, uh, the, yeah, the hurdle receiving end has been announced, by the way. So it's... Uh, yep, David Edstrom, former first-round pick of Vegas Golden Knights this past year. 2025 first, the third and seventh. Sharks retain 17% of hurdle salary. So you have your big move right there, more or less. But, uh, oh, that's a nice issue. Nice is nice injured. And that's not good. Yep, uh, I did see that, Atlanta. Uh, Omar nearly did get traded, which is, uh, it's, uh, yep, Billy, uh, they didn't do much. But uh, I, I'd be surprised if Toronto did. Uh, I thought they'd make a bigger move, but I don't know. 
John Burns for 7 Canadian. Police clash with protesters outside Greek Parliament. Debate over universities as of three hours ago in case of no trades. Which, uh, thank God. Um, <laughs> uh, we had hurdle like literally a few minutes later. Oh, Bill Hunter, I, I have a Twitter space is open right now. So that's where uh, my stuff's coming in. So that's where uh, I, I have a lot of requests, by the way. So uh, I, I'll, I don't know if I'll get to every single one of you, but I'll try to get to as many as I can. So uh, thank you all, by the way, for uh, dealing with this ramble. So, yep, uh, really mainly to say. Zach Mortimer for five. What do you think of the Avs deadline moves? I'm personally a massive fan of them. I think they've been pretty good. I think they did a lot, per se. I mean, Trennan, I really like that move for them. I like Middlestad, Sean Walker to both fortify their defensive end as more of a physical presence over Byram. I would say it's, um, it's an, I don't know if it's going to be enough to get them to the finals, especially with some of the injuries they've had, especially with, um, you know, I mean, you don't know if Landis Cox coming back this year. I doubt it. I mean, you're, you're in an arms race with Vegas. Vegas is trying to get back into that playoff atmosphere. And I mean, they've been struggling. They've had some injuries. I mean, Mantha, Hannafin, Hurdle, like, they're, they're, they're going for it. I mean, going. That's mainly the thing. Like, that's that's pretty much just the weapon, if I say so myself. Sean Ragsdale for five. You mentioned Sherry's 2 overtime game winner earlier, so where's that been during his time in Tampa? Two goals, 10 assists with a no-trade clause. JBB is reaching meme territory. That's the thing with Connor uh, Sherry. Like, if he doesn't work out, like, he's in trouble because his atmosphere is a middle six forward scoring goals especially on the wing with a really good center. And if he's not panning out like that, it's uh, he's in trouble. And that, that's a reason why Tampa Bay has been really pushing for depth because Sherry has, has been one of their bigger disappointments this year. Yeah, I mean, like 46 games. I mean, you were expecting at least some production like he did for the Caps. But like there were times like, for example, in Buffalo, he did poorly, especially in 1920. Then he came back to the Penguins randomly. Was that, it was a strange situation, but like I, Tampa Bay's depth has been pretty pathetic. Like Tanner Janot has been a huge disappointment. I mean, I, I mean, I like Janot. They paid way too much for him. It was a very steep price. Sergachev's out. Isimol isn't bad, but still, he's like more of a, like a, a middle six forward. Glenn Denning, mm. Chernak, you paid the cup tax for him. Tyler Mott has been. Mm. Like, you're just grasping at straws right now, especially if you're Tampa Bay and uh, their, their goaltending has not been up to snuff. Especially for Sergeyev, or for uh, Vasilevsky standard. You're mainly relying on their power play merchants. That That's the main thing with Tampa Bay. That's more or less. Crew Kid 52 is a Rangers fan. I like Rempe, but Kid needs to be careful or else a rinsing from Olivier will be the release of his worst. Oh, dude, I mean, he can't fight people every single day. If you're dealing with that, you're going to have issues. And that's going to be your concern. Um, Banjo playing Bison. Will you make a video about Fanatics? I mean, dude, it's... Uh, I probably botch it like uh, Fanatics, right? I mean, it, it, it's cheap material. Especially with baseball. It just seems like the quality's down. It's like those printed stuff that we did for the Melonheads. Which aren't bad jerseys, but I would not call them Major League Caliber. That's the weird thing. Tampa has the greatest team. <laughs> I wish. Of course, AAA. That's the thing. Like, they're, they're just gunning for another cup. Uh, Spencer Abdo just got on my lunch break. What did I miss? I mean, you, uh, Tomas Hurdle going to Vegas. That's your big move. I don't know if there's anything else coming down, uh, but otherwise, it's... Uh, that's the last trade of the day? Oh, jeez. That's bad. Oof. Spencer Abdo, Bolts fan here. How do you rate the Dumbo trade? I mean, it's it's a, a, a patchwork replacement for Sergachev. Matt Dumba is not what he was. He's still on HL caliber, but he's not anything amazing. You traded a late round pick. Eh. Satan of sources for five. It's Penn's fans. We've had it too good for too long to pay for our pay to deuce. Do you think the new Hextall's owners or Hextall put them on track? They're currently on. I think it's a combination of JR, Hextall, and FSG. JR did the opening salvo. He started setting the team on fire. He kind of went away from their identity and then he got kind of desperate at some times. Like he would just make trades for the sake of it and he didn't have that magic. Then Hextall came in, he just threw gasoline all over everything and then he just tried to do like this half in, half out sort of stuff and it just, it, it backfired horrifically. And FSG is trying to sell tickets and they're trying to load up for a big run. And I think that's, or they, they, want, they want 
to squeeze every last bit of this core and it's just not working. I think that's going to be the big thing. John Burns, is it is he not hurtly enough for a trade? Uh, maybe. Could be. I don't know. Jared Russell for 20. People saying Stone is fine when he didn't play more than 13 minutes a game. Let me actually add this up a little bit there. I actually want to add some music. It's too boring. Sorry about that, kids. People saying Stone is fine when he didn't play more than 13 minutes his last game and has been out while they keep losing and are sliding out of the playoffs. We've seen guys play in the playoffs with punctured lungs. That's why he might come back for the playoffs, but at the same time, it's uh, it's going to be a long shot. El Tamazil for five. When the Knights won the cup last year, I made sure to buy me a Kessel jersey for the meme. Oh, dude. Got to get the memes and also got to get a hot dog and just put it in a Stanley Cup. Defs fan, I mean, the problem is, like, they're getting desperate for goalie help. That's the thing with Jake Allen. Like, I don't think it's going to work, but... I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Jared Russell for five. Vegas uses a rule my management and owners could use, but they acquire a bad player, so that means Vegas is being helped by the NHL. Yeah, I mean, that's that, that's about right. And Pete Dub for two. Only one way to spice up this deadline day is with polka. Eh, I don't know if polka is the right word. I don't know if polka is really the right word or not. But uh, here's the problem. I don't know if there's anything else coming down the pipeline. This has been a uh, one of the deadlines of our time. And I was hoping for some big moves, but uh, the only one we really got was Tomas Hurdle. What, they actually got more in return? Wait, so it's just a first in Edstrom for a third... Oh, wait, Vegas got a third and a seventh? Wait, wait, what? Is, is that right? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on here. Yeah, Hurdle and two-thirds going to Vegas. Yeah, uh, San Jose just wanted to get rid of that contract. There's a... There's a yeah, that's, that, that, that's all I have. Whew. But, uh, I, I mean, that, that's a steal for Vegas if they keep that up. Whew. Crazy, crazy, crazy. That is, uh, that's, that's definitely something. Oh, Tony D'Angelo's going to the Leafs. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's definitely something. Not seeing anything on Tony D'Angelo just yet, but we'll take another caller in the meantime, though. Vince Asaro. Welcome to the show, brother. If you're on, how you doing? I probably got people off, so it's uh, my my apologies there. So I will say that in the meantime, but uh, nothing else. A fourth round pick going to Minnesota for Connor DeWar, by the way. Vince, you there, brother? I don't know if he's here. My, my apologies. My apologies. I'm right here. Yes. It's all good. Sorry about that, brother. How you doing? I'm. I've definitely been better. Okay, so couple things I want to get through. Number one, thanks for taking my call, first off. Thank you, brother. Second, uh, screw you for reminding me that the 2016 Cup Final happened. I just got over that. Hey, I, uh, I'm, my Sharks are my seven, second favorite team, so... Yeah, yeah, I know. But, but you still got it on your first, so I'm happy for you on that. Right. And... I'm happy, too. Third, with the news of the thirds going to Vegas, yeah. as a Sharks diehard, I am fucking going through it right now. Just the news, it dropped on me like a freaking anvil. And I, I'm i literally shaking right now. I don't actually know what to think. My question is, I, I feel like more or less they just wanted to get out of the hurdle contract. Because the problem I mean, is you weren't winning with them. I think that's, that's the reason the why. Like, and, and, and they they did, they did kind of get fleeced. I mean, David Edstrom's a decent prospect. That's, late first yeah, round know, pick in 2025. But... It's just... It's just the fact that it's Vegas. I hate mm. them with every fiber of my being. They're, they're up there right now with Los Angeles Dodgers level of hate for me. I'm a diehard Giants fan as well. Oof. They're up there with me. And to see one of our best players, a man I watched this develop since 2014 and burgeon into this 
superstar that we loved with our hearts, with everything we had, to get traded just to our biggest enemy, and it, it hurts. And the ones and that, that have been talking a lot of shit. Really it hurts. Yeah. And yeah, I have so many friends just in the in the Discord that are Vegas fans. None of them have said anything to me yet, but I'm waiting for it. I'm I'm ready for just the shit that I'm getting with this. I mean, the sad part is you kind of know it's coming, but I mean, that's the that's the problem. I know. I I had we had it so good for so long. It was all, it wasn't a matter of when if the shoe was going to drop, but when and right. just how bad it was going to be. And like you can tell yourself that you're ready for it to happen, but you're never ready for it to happen. Of course not. I mean, I'll probably deal with the same thing in the future about maybe, well, I don't know about Malkin, Latang, Crosby, but I mean, I just had it happen with Gensel. Right, yeah. I mean, but uh, I, as I said, the contract is what actually depressed his value. And I'm surprised was, he waived yeah, his it, no movement clause to go to Vegas. I am very surprised by too. that. Me too. Me too, yeah. If, yeah, if anything, that, that last contract, it was really the, it, aside from obviously the, the two other really questionable contracts the Kachira contract and the the Mark Edward Vlasic contract that was really like that was that extension was Doug Wilson's parting gift to the Sharks be like hey don't worry man the Czech guy you love is gonna stay around for a little while Dougie Wilson loved his eight-year contracts he did he really did definitely man it was the one thing he it was the one thing he wasn't good at contract extensions he was all right with everything else for me all good man well thanks for calling in Vince no problem, man. Thanks again for having me. Yeah, my condolences again, man. I mean, I, I know your pain. Brave, check on, check on your Sharks fan friends tonight, everybody, because we're we're all really not doing well. I don't think anybody's doing well. No, no, we're really not. Yeah, man. Take care, brother. All right, let's go to uh, do, 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 do. let's see. Let's go to uh, Tyler D. Welsh. Tyler, you're on, brother. How you doing? If you, hey, uh, uh, sorry, I had my, I had my uh, mic muted. It's all good, uh, man. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Just got home uh, from work about uh, 20, uh, 20 minutes ago. Nice, man. Um, just out of curiosity, has anyone uh, talked about uh, the Flyers yet? Uh, uh, not really. I know, like they've done like a couple lateral moves. Uh, J- sorry, Eric Johnson coming in. Uh, they did extend Nate Sealer, but Sean Walker's out of the way. So, uh, so what's going on in Philly? Are they more or less just trying to stand pat and realize that they're overperforming, or is it just like they're still trying to like kind of half in, half out because like of how their season went? All right. Well, I mean, with the, like with this, you know, from my completely, you know, um, uneducated perspective, I do kind of feel like um, you know, Dan Breer the rest of the Flyers management core, like, did legitimately want to rebuild unlike, you know, Chuck Fletcher's mm-hmm. but whatever. And then, you know, you kind of point out in the Hater's Guide that, like, you know, we accidentally started winning, so now, I, I, I don't know, it feel, feels like, you know, we can't move um, a, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the bigger pieces um, be, since we do legitimately have a shot to make the playoffs. I mean, you know, even if we do make the playoffs, I'd still consider ourselves lucky if we can, uh, if we can win a playoff series. I mean, it's probably not going to happen, you know, especially since, like, we'd have to go up against Carolina or, uh, or someone like that. Uh, so, I- like, with four- like, to me, like, the playoffs are house money for Philadelphia because, like, you haven't made it there in a while. You didn't expect to be. It's like, hey, let's go. Screw it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the um, you know the last time that we you know played a playoff series in front of fans was when uh, Crosby rem- uh, reminded Philadelphia that he's very very good against us. Definitely, man. Uh, but um, at least for like what, you know what we've done uh, today, I mean you know we do have a lot of injuries on defense now, so I feel like you know really really uh, you know uh, low risk. Um, Acquisitions. I kind of feel like we've made those moves just so that we can try and stay afloat until, like, you know, maybe we, we get a few D men um, uh, uh, off of IR because, like, <laughs> like we've had so many injuries to uh, our D men over the past two weeks, and you know, we at least been man- we've been managed to at least you know tread water. Um, I mean, we want to get we want to get the Panthers last night. Uh, like of all people to score the game winning goal with 20 seconds left, you wouldn't think it'd be like 30 something Garden Hathaway. Yep. I mean, that's, that's surprising, but I mean, that's what Philly's been doing all year. They play gutsy. They play gritty. I mean, that's Tortorella hockey. Uh, 
well. Uh, you know, and it, it's funny you say I mean, you mentioned Tortorella because I'm still waiting for like you know the other shoe to drop. You know, like when is he going to start? You know, doing everything that uh, that got him run out of, of every other place he coached at. Like, uh, you know, I have seen like a couple of puff pieces like oh you know things are different. Like you know this you know the players are buying into a lot more. And in the back of my head, I keep you know I keep on conjuring that image of Mount Tortorella. When is he going to erupt? When is he going to erupt? When is he going to erupt? Um, so, yeah, you, you know, you kind of mentioned playoffs be house money. Like, like pretty much this entire season, uh, this entire season has been house money. I had no expectations, and we like we're running. That's that's more than I could have asked for going into this year. Um, so, you know, I just, I mean, I would be happy to see the Flyers make a playoff spot. I would be happy to see the Flyers win um, win a playoff game. I mean, you've been talking for years. Um, about how great playoff hockey is in person, I would definitely like to see that, um, and hopefully I can get the chance. Uh, really, not much, uh, not much else I can say. But uh, thank you, like, uh, th- uh, thank you a lot for uh, p- um, for, uh, for picking up and let me speak. So, um, thank you. Absolutely, thanks, Tyler. Thank you for joining, my man. No problem. See you. Take care, brother. We'll pull it on here. I got it. Got to add that. Sorry, I'm technical issue there. So uh, there is uh, one more trade in the pipeline, apparently from the Calgary Flames. It's probably a minor trade, if I'm guessing. They they try to help you up. It's like, oh, it's gonna be this big trade. It's like, nah, probably not. I mean, if you're looking at the Flames, like big like free agents coming up, there's probably like they're in like fringes of playoff contention. They might be doing a, a lateral trade, smaller trade per se. Could be shipping off Kevin Rooney. To like a, a team needing depth or Shillington or Dennis Gilbert. Like nothing crazy, I feel like. It's not going to be anything truly insane. It's more or less just getting like the fax machines of the NHL working more or less. That's really what I would say there. Do, 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 do. Tell you what. Let's go with Alex Perillo. Alex, you're on, brother. But I just wanted to make sure everything's okay there. But uh, otherwise, nothing else going on. Just hope everyone's doing all right out there, brother. <laughs> There's no way that guy was from Philly. Way too polite. <laughs> Alex Perello, you're on, brother. How are you? Hello? Hold on. Hello? Oh, I can hear you, brother. How you doing? Doing good, brother. What's up? Uh, well, so I'm a Pens fan living in Colorado. Ooh. So I just want to start off with saying, uh, Avs fans, I, I don't mean to break your heart, but there is no chance in this universe or any other that Crosby is ever winding up on the Avs outside of like a one day contract to go chill with his buddy after he retires. Um, I don't think he's either. I did have a couple of questions um, as far as your thoughts on the trade deadline. Yeah. First off, was, uh, with the pens, do you think like the lack of activity was more because how like poorly they've underperformed with a lot of their their guys that were big time like thoughts on trade deadline, like guys like Riley Smith, Lars Eller. Are they not getting traded because they're not performing well, or is it more to do with things like age or just lack of interest from other teams? It could be a lack of interest. Riley Smith has one more year left on his deal. I think that's why he didn't go. Also, a lot of no trade club, no movement clauses. So, like, Lars Eller has one more year left on his deal. Riley Smith has one more year left on his deal. I thought Lars Eller was a UFA. Jeff Carter, you can't trade because, you know, he's not waiving his no movement clause. Uh, there was just, I mean, I thought Nedeljkovic would have been a trade target, but I guess there was just no real demand for him or the, the value price was too low. So I'm thinking that might be your issue there. But like, as I said, you're mostly locked into a lot of deals. The only one you could really trade was Gensel. And unfortunately it was a buyer's market. So you didn't really get that much for him. It was a bulk return. So the only other move was uh, Magnus Helberg for uh, Ludovic Weber, who is more or less just a backup. So like Blomqvist and Gauthier can get reps in the AHL. That, that does seem like what they're doing. I, 
I did want to say, I do like the one uh, Finnish guy they got in the Gensel trade. I do think he, if he can develop in Finland and come over in the like, next two years, I think that might be a, a good piece from that trade. Oh, Veli um, Yep. Yeah. He did, uh, he had issues in the AHL the first time he came in, but he's done very strong this past year. I know Cruz Lucius has some upside, Vasily Ponomaryov has some issue, uh, upside as well, but like they're not like their best prospects, but they're adding to the depth of a very weak prospect system. Ponomaryov will probably get a, a look or two, like end of the year, probably start of next year too. I, I think that's the hope. And then kind of going circling back to the abs. Um, I was really surprised they didn't make a trade for a goalie, to be honest. I think their goaltending is probably the weakest link on that team right now, and I'm kind of surprised there wasn't any movement there, especially with uh, Frank Kuz or Francois or however you uh, pronounce Francois, it. Uh, Francois. It took me a while to figure that out, too, so it's, a, <laughs> it's all good. Uh, but, yeah, like, they... I feel like they didn't really address the goalie situation, at least as like far as a backup. Like honestly, I thought Nedeljkovic might be an option for them there. I thought so too. I mean, Justice Anonen has actually done all right. I'm guessing they might trust him. That's my guess because I know like uh, Alex Georgiev is, eh. but like without Francois, I think they're probably trusting Justice Anonen. I get. It. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it works out for them because I have a feeling Vegas is gunning for them. This oh, dude, it, it, it's an arms race. I know Vegas has been kind of slipping in the standings, and I think that's why they made these big moves. But, too, it's, I mean, Vegas is Vegas. They're going to fight. Well, uh, thank you for taking my call. Have a, have a great rest of your day. Definitely. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. All right. Might take one or two more callers, so I know there are a bunch of requests. I wish I could get to every single one of you, but unfortunately I won't be able to. Uh, Stefan Hook. I'll take you in the meantime, brother. I know it's uh, going to take a little bit there in the meantime, but uh, we'll, we'll see that in the meantime. Uh, is there any announcement on the Flames trade? Uh, nothing yet. But that is the only real trade to... Uh, well, Georgiev is not really disrespect. He's around 900 save percentage. He's a solid goalie, but it's just like, mm, it's okay. Wait, Petrod, uh, why did we imprison Zahorna? He's more, he, he has flashes, but the problem is like, he's more or less quiet in the meantime. But uh, it looks like Stefan is not here. We'll take a look at somebody else in the meantime. Let's go with... Dylan Chiro. Dylan, you're on, brother. If I can find you. Oh, yeah. Oh, how you doing, brother? I'm doing all right, man. How are you doing? Definitely, man. I'm good, man. What's up? So, as a Bruins fan, watching this trade deadline happen, I'm thinking to myself, Boston's going to make a big trade. Then we buy that guy, Patrick Maroon. Hey, Maroon is a legend. Peek, he is a rental. He is a rental. That's why Andrew Peak is confusing to me. Because we have depth on the right side. We got McAvoy, Shattenkirk, and then whoever our second pairing guy is. Yeah. Can't think of his name at the moment. I'm surprised about Peak. Like, yeah. he's never been good analytically. And I'm thinking Maroon is more of that Milan Lucic replacement. That's my best bet. That is the exact thing why Maroon is joining the Bruins. Because yep. Luigi just had to beat his wife. Mm -hmm. And but he's out for the rest of the year, even though the charges were cleared. But still, it's that's why. Yeah. Uh, with Andrew Peake, the only thing that's good with him, he's signed longer term compared to got yeah, like Chan Kirk. Yeah, but I, I don't know if he's the right move. I mean, even with trading a third-round pick in Jakob Zaborl. What are you thinking about the Olmark situation? Because he was nearly traded to the Kings earlier today. I'm glad he said no. He, he just kind of saved Boston right there. I don't want Pierre Luc Dubois. Who wants Pierre Luc Dubois? I mean, I don't know. They probably want to. Uh, uh, he's like the catnip. It's like the Sam Bradford. It's like, oh, he could be really good if he's in the right situation, and it just never happens. Yeah, and 
also the thing with Dubois, when he joined the Bruins as a first line center being paid eight and a half million, we got Pasta not being paid eleven, McAvoy being paid nearly ten, thanks to Ken Holland. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have Swayman going to be paid soon. It just didn't make any sense. All Mark Savis. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Allmark still has a lot of term left, if I remember correctly. I'm, it's going to be like he's a term. Got, he's got one year left. He's got one year left after this one. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you've got some big pieces. I mean, DeBrusque will probably be gone. Grizzlick might be gone. Forbert's probably gone. Yeah, Forbert's gone. No, yeah. we're not bringing him back. Yeah, Forbert was – I never understood that signing to begin with. It was just like he was a big body on a bad defense in Winnipeg, and it's like, okay. He had a good season his first his first few years in Boston. Yeah. And then this season he got hurt and just fell off the face of the map. Hmm. Surprise there. But yeah, I mean, uh, oh yeah, he did. Whew. That happens. Yeah. Um, the Alconiok, the guy that San Jose got for Myers going to Calgary. Yep. Wyatt Kalniuk. Hmm. Yeah, that guy. Yep, Wyatt Kalniuk. I know uh, uh, sh- uh No, uh, Artikunyuk. Nikita Artikunyuk. Now Kayunuk. Uh, Nikita Kotyuk. Interesting. Because yeah, I know he was a big piece in the uh, Timo Meyer trade. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. It's all right. So I, he's I, going there. Interesting. So that's the last trade coming in. Yes. For what? We don't know. Well, I mean, probably something. I know, like, he hasn't had the greatest year in San Jose, but he still has some upside. He's 23, young defenseman. As I said, he was a big piece in the uh, Timo Meyer trade. Yeah, so that's why that confuses me a bit. Because 23, I know you have Kalen Addison, but you can build with him and Addison as a solid second pairing, possibly. Maybe. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Well, man, I'm going to let you go. Thank you for coming on again, Dylan. You're welcome, man. Take care, brother. Have a nice rest of your day. Peace out, man. All right, Stefan, sorry for the wait, dude. I I didn't realize you were... No, no problem. Uh, hello, hello. Hello. Uh, thank, thank. Uh, I just want to say thank you for um, this uh, streaming. Uh, I'm just not a real good fan of uh, hockey, but I... Uh, I'm still watching you since 2021. Uh, 2021. Uh, I mean, I, I still, uh, I watch all of your, your videos, especially you know, Legacy of History or uh, Sports Ball. <laughs> Definitely, thank and you, brother. Because uh, you know, I, I just want to explore this uh, uh, American. I mean, I mean this. Uh, usually exotic sports because I'm I'm not a uh, US citizen. I I'm actually from Romania. And, uh, to be honest, it's it's interesting for me to be to to see these matches. I mean, not full time matches, but you know some res- uh, retrospectives or uh, you know so, to just you know just learn. Uh, all the all sports rules, and to be honest, um, no, I'm. Uh, mm, to be honest, I just watch all the you know all Pittsburgh uh, areas uh, teams, especially Pittsburgh Steelers, of oh course. <laughs> and uh, I just want and uh, I um, of course uh, I also watch you know uh, big big. Uh, Fans and uh, pirates, but um, I'm just interesting about the um, this season about uh, the playoffs because uh, nobody clinched. In, uh, it it uh, takes a little bit for NHL teams to clinch, so you probably won't be getting those clinchings until next couple weeks. Mm-hmm. I just but um, it is about uh, it is about uh, to clinch. About the points or what? Uh, I, I would say, like, um, it's more or less depending on, like, uh, magic numbers, per se. So, uh-huh. as I said, like, you're not really going to find out, uh, like, the entire playoff, like, outline until maybe a week or a couple days before. Mm-hmm. 
interesting. I mean, no, but I, I last thing I guess uh, there are some, there are a few teams uh, which which are clinch at that moment, to be honest, and it surprised me nobody clinch it. Yep, but uh, uh, that's more or less needs just needs time. Yep. I would say like Cordell Richmond said, usually mid March, uh, uh, mid March eliminations are soon though. Like, so your, your teams like, you know, Chicago, uh, Columbus, San Jose, they'll probably be eliminated relatively soon. Mm-hmm. And what about penguins? Oh, they're, they're done. The penguins, they, they're, they're done. Uh, they got shellac six, nothing yesterday. They're about 10 points away from a playoff spot. It's uh, it ain't good. It definitely ain't good. Yep, uh, maybe. I mean, we'll see, man. Thank you for calling in, Stefan. Appreciate you, my man. I appreciate you, too, bro. Definitely. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right. But in the meantime, I'll take one more caller, and then we'll call it a shift from there, because it looks like everyone else is gone. But, uh, do, 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 do. let's see here. I, I'm sorry. I know I got so many requests, but it's just I won't be able to, unfortunately. It's just not enough time in the day. We'll go with Dan Goodwin. You're the final caller in the meantime, brother. So, uh, yeah, uh, Bushnevich is not being moved, Connor. So we're good there. Oh, uh, yeah, Cordell, the pens will be out by a week or two. So, Dan Goodwin, you're on, brother. Hey, Trey, how you doing, man? I'm good, brother. How are you? Uh, pretty good. Um, just going to say real quick, as a Bruins fan, this deadline kind of turned out to be what I expected it to be. Whereas I felt like we weren't going to make like a major move, but if we did, I kind of would see it coming considering what everyone's been saying about, um, you know, Allmark. Mm-hmm. I mean, I figure he'll probably be a move in the off season, I'm guessing, to pay for Swayman. That's my guess. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking too. And like overall, the whole deadline, the biggest thing for me was definitely Hurdle going to Vegas. Oh. And even the big thing for me was like Tarasenko going from the Sens to the Panthers, which... I honestly thought he didn't have, like, wasn't his best year, but I'm sure the Panthers, to me, it kind of showed, you know, they're really pushing for this thing. Well, the thing with Tarasenko is he's more of a middle six forward. He does have some scoring prowess. He's not what he was. But the thing, too, like, he had 40 points in 57 games. He can still put up, like, decent numbers on a middle six forward. Yeah. And And, uh, overall, the whole deadline to me, like, kind of... Very quiet. Doing their thing with like you know the LTIR things, but like you know it was just kind of one of those deadlines where it didn't really surprise me, but it wasn't so much of you know like complete chaos on. In, oh yeah, from my view. the big the real thing was hurdle. That was the big surprise. Okay. But otherwise, most of the trades happened beforehand. That's that's the only fear which happens with like the NHL trade deadline. It's like ah great. Yeah. What was your overall thought uh, about Gensel being traded? Because I could definitely see it coming, but did you see that coming? I did. I mean, he had an unrestricted free agent. You, He was the best goal player on the market, more or less. I mean, you had to do it. And the problem is the Pens don't have the cap. There's no one else to really trade. So yeah. might as well try and reforge the prospect system. And the, I mean, FSG still wants to win now, but it's just been a bad year. And I mean, a bad year. So yeah, it's... Uh, like- I know everyone's upset about the deal, but I mean, at the same time, it's it's a bulk return. FSG still wants to win, so you got bunting in return. You had to even out the cap, and that's just how that goes. Yeah, I felt like it wasn't the worst case scenario in terms of return. Absolutely, yeah, I think so too. I mean, like I know, like I was hoping for better prospects, but it's like it's a rental. Yeah, I can basically only envision it as a rental too. I don't know what Carolina's cap space is. But I can only visualize Gensel being there just for this part of the year and for the playoffs. Definitely, man. I think so. All right. Thank you, Dan. Well, thank you for having me on. I appreciate you, brother. All right. Take care, guys. I did want to say, uh, but uh, yeah, that was just a little experiment I did. Just take some callers, see how it worked out. But uh, I figure for one more segment... We'll do some random puck doku because fuck it, why not? Wait, all the trades are out. Biggest move was Tomas Hurdle going to Vegas. Kyle Poso going to Florida. 
couple other deals, but for the most part, it's uh, it's it's definitely been something. Ooh, Montreal and Hartford. Fuck it, Sylvain Turgeon. Because Carolina Hartford, let's go. Uh, Montreal, Washington, Rick Green. Let's go, Rick. Uh, nah, nah, come on. You got to go older with these guys. 800 games played in his career for Montreal. Oh, dude, there's so many you can think of here, man. I mean, Ralph Backstrom. Let's go. 300 assists, 800 games played. Ooh. Ooh. Kinky, kinky, kinky. Uh, so you got average somebody. It's probably like a thousand games, point per game. Uh, Glenn Murray. Let's go. 300 goals scored career at 800 games. I mean, dude, so many names you can think of, man. So many names. Uh, the problem is I got to think of like some random name that just puts up like 40 points for Beak. Pat for Beak. Let's go. 300 goals scored for El Capitals. Did Bobby Carpenter get 300? I don't know if he did. I mean, Denis Maroc. 300 assists for the Capitals. Ooh. Uh, uh, uh. I don't know if Kelly Miller did. Uh, Mike Ridley. 300 assists for Carolina. You can also do Hartford here, too. Let's go Jeff Sanderson. And then 300 goals. Let's do... do a bunch of different names here actually especially some of their deadline rentals the later 2000s Matt Cullen did he get 300 I don't know if Matt Cullen got 300 Ooh. Huh. let's see wrecking ball Doug Waits oh, there are a bunch of different names you can do here. Sammy Kappen I don't know if he got 300 though Murray Craven Ah, damn it. I thought I got 300. I failed. It's terrible. Fuck, okay, I'll do... Oh, wait. I already did for a beak. Ugh. Awful. I should have waited for Carolina. Damn it. Damn it. Ugh. I'm failing. Let's go, Recky. Ah, sad face. Sad face. Blaine Staunton. That wasn't a bad one. Patches, Jordan Stahl, Eric Stahl. Oh, Dennis Murray. Okay, 300. Dennis Maroc had a bunch of goals early on. Yeah, he hit 350. Because he had a, a big seasons with Washington early on. But I'll do those last Super Chats in the meantime. Lazarus for five. Hey, Tree, hope you're doing well, buddy. Never get a chance to catch the streams. Any updates on Stars moves so far? This deadline stay safe. I mean, Stars have been... Uh, biggest move was Tanev. Tanev more or less to shore up the defense. Joel Hanley's gone. It's a That's an instant upgrade in general. Didn't have to give up a ton to get him, too. So there's your big move. I mean, Tanev is the move. They didn't need to do that much, to be completely honest with you. So, like, they're pretty much loaded to go. Tanev is more or less just being brought up as depth. I would say, more or less. The Medical Music Man for 5 Tree, I just got into hockey, but I'm unfortunately a San Francisco native. Well, it's 300 assists and 300 goals. It's both. I did uh, 300 assists. I think I did... Um, I'm trying to make sure. I did Ridley for 300 assists. Uh, Dylan, no, it's for 300 goals. But uh, how is it looking for my cup favorite shark chance? Uh, it's going to be a couple years, dude. You just uh, Hurdle's gone. Logan Couture is going to be sitting there. Mark Edward Vlasic still sitting there. Like, they're, they're tanking big time. And I mean, big time. Well, Roaring Thunder, it's rivalry, too. You don't want to give up, like, a big player to a rival. That's why. 
That's why they rejected the offer from Edmonton. Brendamore wouldn't be a bad one either. And Triple A for five. Breaking news: TK12 just got his 100,000th subscriber. That guy's come a long way. I mean, dude. He asked. Congratulations, brother. I appreciate you. But I, I, I will say that in the meantime. Oh, dude, uh, Stefan, uh, pens aren't tanking. They're just, they're just bad. They ain't tanking. And John Burns for $2. Uh, Calgary Flames, D-Man, Jordan Osterley claims, claims waivers. Yeah, I think so. And the report card on Flames GM Craig Conroy, how'd he do? Like, he just he just had to get rid of pieces. Like, Tanev was going to be a free agent. Hannafin was going to be a free agent. And Inlinholm were going to be free agents. They got decent returns for all three, I think. Enough for, like, to at least bolster some things up. So I think they'll be okay. But, once again, time will tell there. Time will tell. Well, Cameron Gares, uh, Puck Doku is Immaculate Grid. It is. It's with hockey. I know uh, NA, uh, Immaculate Grid does have hockey, but Puck Doku, I feel, is a bit better. It's more in-depth. <laughs> Penguins trading Sidney Crosby to the Avalanche for Jack Johnson. <laughs> sure. But, guys, it was a pleasure. I'm sorry this was so boring. I wish there was more going on. But um, thank you all for joining me in the meantime. This was the 2024 NHL trade deadline. Video will be coming out probably in a few days. But, guys, peace out. I'll see you around in the future. Have yourselves a great day and a great weekend. Stay safe. God bless.